Appalachia. You were talking about this area that is going to be moving in this strong tornado moving into Pemiscot County. I know you're not under a warning right now, but I want to give everybody ample warning on this storm. This is a dangerous tornado and you can see, boy, that is a classic, classic hook echo debris signature that is going through the area right now. Again, this is going to be headed. If it holds together, unfortunately, Carothersville, this is headed right to you. So let's hope it dissipates. But again, the atmosphere is very conducive for severe weather in this area. And that is why we're really concerned about this storm. That is debris. See that red right there? I think that's uh, Monet that there in northeastern Arkansas. Um, that is debris. That's debris that's being picked up by radar. That's not rain. That's not hail. That's the actual tornado that is on the ground. And uh, we can scope it here and show you that debris signature. It will match up with that bright red right here. And it is. see what we're talking about? That is the debris. So that is a tornado on the ground on First Alert Doppler Network. You can see Dunklin County Line right here, County Line Road. Again, it's still a little bit of a distance away, but um, it's close enough that we want to go ahead and stick with this uh, because this is a dangerous, dangerous tornado uh, based on what we've seen, the reports that are coming into us. I'm going to uh, put a line track, not a cell track. Um, again, I think Memphis was tracking it at 45 miles per hour. I'm tracking it right now at 50 miles per hour and I'm tracking the actual tornado. So let's put a let's put a 30 minute track on this tornado. So this is the actual tornado. You can see some of the areas. So at 738 in 12 minutes, it'll be moving through Rington in about uh, 744 Hornersville Reeves at 752. And again, this is a confirmed tornado. It is on the ground. It is doing damage right now. It will be crossing Missouri right state line road and Missouri Highway 108. That is where that circulation is going to cross. The tornado will cross over Highway 108 pretty close to County Line Road. The main tornado will likely stay based on the current movement will stay just to the south of Cardwell, but it's close enough that we want you to take in your safe spot. A lot of times these strong tornadoes as they cycle will quickly turn to the left and a new one will form on the south side. So if that were to happen, then this tornado would go right into the town of Cardwell. So I want Cardwell. I want you in your safe spot right now. The tornado is moving into the Leachville area. Again, this is in uh, Arkansas still, but it is about to cross into our viewing area and this is a strong strong signature for a tornado that we are seeing right there a very intense tornado we've seen photos of it again um, we know we have a tornado on the ground doing damage that is about to move into Dunkling County I'll put the debris signature on again there it is we still have debris you can see all the winds being fed into the storm near Leachville some very strong inflow winds these winds will be blowing into the storm. That's the tornado. And then on the back side, we've got strong winds on the back side of this storm as well. But that's it. We definitely have a tornado. It's on the ground. That's Dunkling County. You can see it's moving in this general direction. So it's going to be crossing Missouri Highway 108. It may cross just south of that, which would be Arkansas 77, I think, as it moves towards the Hornersville area. Something I want to watch again, if this storm cycles, what happens is the tornado will get on the outside of the mesocyclone and that's when it will ride around the circulation and they turn to the left sometimes as a new tornado develops. So that's why I want Cardwell in safety. I want you in a basement if you have it. If you don't have it, I want you to be on the lowest level of your home. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Same story for you here in Hornersville. You definitely need to be in your safe spot right now. Again, a very, very tightly wrapped up tornado that is moving into Dunkling County as we speak. Lisa, you see anything else in the chat about any more damage with this?
Uh, not seeing anything else in the chat other than, yes, we've had confirmation of a large and extremely dangerous tornado over Leachfield moving northeast. And again, that's been fluctuating at times between 45 and 50 miles an hour. Now they're reporting that that's moving northeast at 50 miles an hour. So uh, really the areas that's going to hit hard is going to be the boot heel. Dunklin, Pemiscott counties, again, Hornsville. We're looking at other areas that may be in the path of that later on, and that's going to be an area is near Cooter Carothersville looking to be a little bit further north, but we're still again going to be watching in this general vicinity as it will be continuing to move into our southern counties. It's again moving to the northeast right now at 50 miles an hour. If this maintains its strength, we could potentially see that move into areas near Lake County in western Tennessee. So again, all eyes on this right now. We're dealing again with a very dangerous situation and as this supercell has a confirmed tornado on the ground, there's again going to be many of other uh, cells that we could be watching as we head through the night. So something to really keep in mind is that low pressure system with that front is still well off into the border, the western border of Missouri with that front draping through Oklahoma. So really that severe weather threat ends once that cold front moves through the heartland and that could be during the pre dawn hours of tomorrow morning. So an active event going on right now. We'll continue to watch this activity and monitor it as we're heading through the evening hours. Again, no other reports that I'm getting in other right now that uh, there could be again some actually a new update. There could be some reports of damage around Monet and going into Leech Leechville. So we're going to continue to watch those areas, which is just going to move into southern portions of the boot heel as we're heading into the next half an hour. Yeah, you can see they did just continue that tornado warning. Steel Carothersville, you're now in it. We talked about Pemiscott County. It is headed your way. This is the only warning we have right now, and officially it is still not in Dunkling County, but boy, is it close. You can see it right here moving through Leechville. Again, once this circulation gets a little farther east, we'll tell you folks in Cardwell you're okay, but I'm still concerned sometimes when these tornadoes cycle, what happens is they ride the mesocyclone, and the mesocyclone's doing this, so the tornado can turn to the left as it weakens, and then another one forms to the south. So I'm going to continue to watch that closely right now. That doesn't appear to be happening. It just seems to be a significant tornado, long track tornado that went through the Jonesboro area. There it is right there. It is about to cross. I think that's Highway 77 in Arkansas that turns into uh, 108. Uh, I think was it 108 in in Dunkling County? Let's zoom on in a little closer and you can see. Uh, yeah, 108. You can see 77 right here. So the actual tornado is just to the south of Cardwell, as you can see. Here it is moving through the, the town of Leechville, uh, just to the south of Dunkling County. This is Dunkling County right here, the line, and it's going to be moving in very, very shortly. So again, you folks in southern Dunkling County, please get into shelter. Make sure you are in your safe spot. A basement would be great if you have it. If you don't have a basement, put as many walls between you and the outside by getting into that lowest level of your home and make sure it's an interior room. I say this a lot. Sometimes the bathroom is not the best location because the bathroom has an exterior wall. In some cases, that closet would be a better choice if it's surrounded by interior space on your house, but a very strong signature. Remember, this is the storm we were talking about when we were tracking the storm moving through Graves County and Callaway County. We kept focusing out on this storm because we knew this storm was entering in an environment that was going to be very, very favorable for tornadic development. And there it is. And this is the debris ball right here. This is the debris signature. Hail and high winds are likely right now moving into uh, Dunk Dunkling County right now and uh, moving into the Hornersville area. Uh, Cardwell, you're on the back side of it. I, I still don't want you getting out of your safe spot yet in case this wraps around to the left, but uh, it's looking a little better for you folks in Cardwell. Hornersville, it's not looking good at all right now. Please, please be in your safe spot. Highway 164, you need to be uh, underground if you can be. If you can't, again, that lowest level of your home. State Highway K, southwest of Hornersville. This tornado will be moving over there very, very shortly. We'll go ahead and get a new update on the shear that is right here where it's a crossing. Look at that. Wow, we have a significant shear marker right there. Very, very intense, very strong winds, and uh, we're still seeing some debris possibly with this. Yeah, there it is. You can see this is the inflow right here. This is the debris from the inflow.
but leaves or dust or bugs, whatever's getting sucked into the storm. And that's the tornado right there, crossing Highway 77 just south of the Dunklin County line. I mean, just south. There it is. And it's going to move into Dunklin County here very, very shortly. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning for Dunklin County and Pemiscott County. This is a an extremely dangerous situation. This tornado has caused damage, possible injuries in northeastern Arkansas, and it is moving into the boot heel right now. Other storms we're watching closely moving towards the Murray, Kentucky area. This tornado warning off to our east, that's the storm we tracked earlier through Graves County, Callaway County that had a tornado warning. It has spun up again. There is a significant void right now in this general area, but look at what's happening just southwest of Poplar Bluff. New storms are trying to develop, so we're going to have to watch this closely to see if any of these turn into supercells like the storm that we have moving into the boot hill. And as we pan off to the west, what Lisa was talking about, we're in for a very, very long night until this passes. And, and this is going to be moving into our area after midnight. But you can see severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings on this line as well. And there is no sign that this activity will weaken before it moves into our area. So right now we have a damaging tornado moving into southern Dunkling County, about to move into Pemiscott County as well. Let's stop the motion on this and we're going to zoom back into this area. <clears throat> Again, this is moving into the boot heel right now. And there, wow, look at that reflect. That is the debris right there, just a tight hook. I mean, when you study weather and you get a severe weather textbook and they show you what a hook echo looks like on radar, that is a textbook hook echo. You've got the inflow notch right there. You've got rear flank downdraft on the backside and you have a debris signature. Rain and hail up in the Hornersville area, but that is the tornado right there. And it looks like it's going to cross just south of the Hornersville area. So let's zoom in a little closer and kind of track this as it moves towards Hornersville. Again, State Highway K, this tornado is moving towards you right now. Uh, Cardwell, we're almost gonna, we're almost to the point where we can say it's gonna miss you because this would really have to take a hard turn to the left. And right now I don't see that happening, but still I want you in your safe spot. Anywhere along Missouri Highway 108 in your safe spot. Missouri Highway 164, State Highway K. This is headed your way now. I'm going to pan this off. We're looking at the actual tornado right there. I want to give you a first alert uh, for other areas. We're talking about Pemiscott County now, headed in towards uh, on, along Highway 164. This is going to be headed just towards the steel area, and it may, if it holds together, the actual trajectory would probably keep it just south of Carothersville but it's going to be close. So cover othersville. I know you're in this warning. You need to be taking it uh, seriously. You still got a few minutes. Matter of fact, I'm going to back things out. We're going to put a track. Lisa, you did say they're tracking this at 50 miles per hour too now, correct? Yeah, there's a there's a little issue going on in the chat page right now. So um, it was going at to the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. And something that was also noted within that is Grant, you've been talking about that debris signature and there's been at least debris potentially lofted 14,000 feet up into the atmosphere. And if that's the case, then that again is going to signify a very strong damaging tornado on the ground. There have been some reports of power flashes, which would mean again a tornado on the ground passing over some power lines. There's also been at least damage located to the southwest of Leachfield. And within that, we've also been tracking some large hail. At times, this cell had up to two inch diameter hail, which would be the size of an egg. Now, it still could be at least down to one inch. So large hail within this with also dealing with that potential of a strong damaging tornado and really continuing to track uh, this storm, which has at least been all the way up to 40,000 feet in the atmosphere. So a healthy living storm, but very dangerous as it continues to move into southern portions of the boot heel, especially Dunklin County, as we're continuing into the next, let's say 10, 15 minutes. If you're going to be in locations near Hornersville, really get to your safe spot. That's going to be the main concern. Again, really just kind of giving you a brief overview. We are having a tornado watch across the entire heartland, at least through 11 o'clock tonight. So even though it's only impacting some of our southern 
southern counties now, there still is the potential for more storms to form as that front is all the way off in Oklahoma. We're seeing a lot of activity flare up across Missouri, a lot of warnings in Arkansas. Well, we're also going to watch a severe thunderstorm warning, which has been trimmed back a little bit, but that's just to the south of Rolla. We'll have to watch that one because that may clip some of our northern counties near Iron County, areas near St. Genevieve County, as well as Randolph County in southern Illinois. So this will be another interesting portion to watch as we continue in through the evening hours, as well as continuing to monitor a lot of storms that are blowing up from Arkansas and now moving into the boot heel. So again, confirmed tornado on the ground. This is going to be impacting portions of Dunklin County and extended into Pemiscot County as we're continuing to watch this. I'll still try to give you some updates when I can get back into the page and see okay. what's going on regarding reports. Thanks, Lisa. This is the track. Now I've tracked the tornado. This is the tornado track right here. Gilbert 7, 748, Holland 758, Steele 802, Carothersville 817, Ridgely 830. So this tornado will track across southeastern Dunklin County, a good chunk of Pemiscott County, and then it will be moving into Lake County and Obion County if it holds together. Union City, I'm talking to you. You see this. Again, I like to uh, give as much leeway and much first alert as we can. So if this holds together, Union City, Tennessee, Fulton, Kentucky, this is headed your way. And this is the type of the environment that we could see to where this storm, it may, the tornado may dissipate, but it will recycle and a new one will form and a new one will form. This will probably produce two or three tornadoes throughout the night as it moves across this area into Western Kentucky. At least that's what the models are suggesting and they've been suggesting throughout the entire event. So that tornado is now crossing into Dunkling County as we speak. Um, you can see there's the inflow right there moving across State Highway K. It's moving into the southern parts of Hornersville. It looks like the rotation will stay away from Cardwell. So Cardwell, this tornado is now off to your east and it will stay to your east. Kind of pan back, but Hornersville, this is the tornado. It is moving off to the northeast at about 50 miles per hour. I'll put the winds on here. And folks, this is a this is a uh, strong tornado. I mean, this this type of uh, we're seeing what what is called radar folding, which means that our radar has a signature that goes out to I think I have it developed to go out to 110 knots. And once it's stronger than 110 knots, which is about 120 miles per hour, it will fold back to the other colors, which tells us that the winds could be well over 120 to 130 miles per hour in this storm, which would put it a, a, a pretty good EF3 type storm that we could be looking at. Again, we won't know that until this is surveyed. Again, this could still be, this could be a loft right now. It could be cycling, but um, it was on the ground. It was doing damage. We'll take a look to see if we still have a debris signature to see if it's still on the ground. It is still on the ground. It is crossing State Highway K right now. That is the tornado. It is on the ground and it is going to be moving into the southern side of Hornersville. And then following that, um, that tornado, it's going to be moving in this general direction. It's going to be moving in this general direction. As you can see, there's a debris ball. It is now just south of Hornersville. That is the tornado right there. It is just to the east of State Highway K now. It is about to move into uh, Pemiscott County here very, very shortly. It looks likely that this tornado will be headed right towards the Steel area between Hornersville and Steel. If you're, I think this is 160. I see State Highway NN, but I'm, but it's, I don't know what the 60 is because the state is covering it up. Let me zoom in to see if that can change. Okay, 164 um, between Steele and Hornersville. You definitely need to be seeking shelter right now. This tornado is headed your way. It is on the ground. Reflectivity shows it. The correlation coefficient is how we see debris. It shows it. And uh, the velocity shows that it is likely a strong tornado, likely producing winds well over 100 miles per hour, maybe approaching 130, 140 miles per hour as it moves off to the north and east. So there is our tornado right here to the south of Hornersville. That red dot right there is the, the heaviest signature of debris. And you could just see this inflow notch just wrapping around this system. You can see State Highway TT. Uh, you definitely want to be in your safe spot because that tornado is headed your way. So let's back up just a bit 
and kind of get the counties on here. You can see here is the Pemiscott County line. The tornado is still in the south central parts of Dunkling County, and it's going to be going into Pemiscott County here very, very shortly. I want to take a look at a couple of other storms just to be on the safe side because we have new activity developing to the south right now of Donovan, as you can see here, we're to the south. I'm thinking, is that the storm tracker that we have driving south right now? Okay. Okay, so we have the storm tracker driving south towards Carothersville. Uh, when I, I need to know when, let me, let me get an idea here because I want to make sure that everybody stays safe, including our uh, storm tracker. Uh, make sure I don't want anybody getting hurt tonight. I remember we did this with 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 Hank when we had him here with the Perryville tornado and I had to make sure he turned around. So um, the reason I'm saying that is is I don't want him driving into the storm itself because he will not see the tornado until it's too late. I'm sure he's still near New Madrid or maybe not even to New Madrid yet uh, based on when I think he left. But um, so that's the storm tracker. So so close to Benton right now. Okay, so wow, we've got it really wrapping up right there. An extreme tornado uh, signature on radar. And I know I gave Cardwell, we talked about that being east of you, but there's a little kink. That's just east of Cardwell as well. Um, yeah, nothing. Wow, this is, yeah, the radar is folding. Uh, I, I know sometimes I'll, I'll be a little too scientific, but it, it helps me to understand how severe this possible tornado is. Again, it's not a possible tornado. It is on the ground. It is doing damage. And our radar shows that the winds are very, very strong in this tornado. It's moving across the Hornersville area right now as we speak. Uh, we'll take another scope. You can see they just updated. Can, is the chat still having some issues, Lisa? The chat? Uh it is. It's kind of kicking a lot of people in and out, um, but there are no new reports on this when I was just looking at it a second ago, other than the fact that it is still on the path moving northeast at about 50 miles an hour. Um, as Grant's been indicating, yes, it has a very signified couplet on that and really strong winds again. So we're tracking that tornado that will be moving into southern portions of Dunklin County. That at least indentation where we typically track the Debris that's going to be right off to the right almost over Hornersville, but right off to the southeast of that. So if you are in Hornersville, if you are northeast of that, that's going to be near Rives. Then this will be making its way off towards Steel. Please again get in your safe spot. This is not anything to mess with, especially when we're having this moving through during the evening hours. And because these storms are moving rather quickly, they can be very hard to see that tornado on the ground. So a confirmed tornado is what we're watching right now. No other reports other than that. This did cause damage south of the boot heel prior to it moving into our area. So knowing that it already caused damage and potentially significant damage, which we'll have to wait until daylight for some of those reports to come in. This is not a storm to mess with. Again, a very dangerous situation where you will want to get into those lower levels. I'm just able to get back in the chat right now, so I'm just going to check if there's any okay. other reports other than um, a house. It, it has hit something significant in Hornersville because that is a significant debris signature. Now uh, you can see we've got that dark blue just east of Hornersville. So uh, this is still on the ground. It is causing damage. It's been on the ground for quite some time. That's the tornado right there. So we don't uh, I mean, we can't really track it any better than this. Radar is showing us what is being lofted in the air. We know this is not meteorological, which means we know it's not hail. We know it's not rain. Uh, it's not mist. It's not snow. It's trees, rooftops. Uh, it could be anything. It's a very dark signature. And the last time we saw a signature that dark was the Perryville tornado. And it was because it was full of cars. And, and, and so that means that this is probably significant damage right now that we are seeing that is in. And boy, it just lines up perfectly, unfortunately. Um, this, is, this is not good news for you folks in southern Dunkling County in the Hornersville area. Steel, please get in your safe spot. Uh, anywhere along the New Madrid um, Dunkling County lines, we need to be getting in our safe spot. We're going to zoom in a little bit more here. And uh, here we go. Look at the inflow coming in. This is headed right towards Highway TT. I'm pretty sure we have a, what I would say, based on the debris signature and the velocity, at least an EF3 tornado is on the ground. Again, we won't know until um, it is surveyed, uh, but I've been doing this a long time, and when I see the velocities as strong as they are, 
th they usually uh, line up with that. And we are, it looks like it's becoming rain wrapped now as it moves into TT right now. We'll take a look at the winds. There it is, there's the tornado. And, and what I mean by folding, you see how it's just, it, it, we don't have the red and green together. It's just all over the place because of how uh, intense this rain, this wind is. See, this right here would be really, really bright green, but it's folding over. It should be a negative, but it's folding over to a positive because it is so strong. And you can see it tops out at 100 miles per hour. So we know that the winds are going towards the radar stronger than 100 miles per hour because the range, because the radar has folded. We've got winds going away from the radar at about 80 miles per hour. So we can do the quick math and we've got some rotation around 150 to 180 miles per hour possibly right here south of Rives. And it's going to be headed towards Highway 164, I think that is, and State Highway N right near the intersection. Again, this is a very intense tornado. It appears as though it may be becoming rain wrapped right now, but we have a pretty significant uh, shear marker on it and we have a very significant debris ball signature on it as well. At least we did. And yeah, we still do. That is, that is this has been on the ground for quite some time. That is the tornado. You can see it moving across Highway TT right now, south of Rives and it's gonna be headed towards Highway 164 there. This tornado will continue to track off to the northeast. And as of right now, this is the only storm in our area that is uh, very concerning right now. We will likely see other storms move in. For you folks that are just tuning in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back things out. We're gonna take a look at the entire heartland because I know there are some folks that are saying, hey, I got a thunderstorm, what's going on where I live? Uh, this storm is gonna stay just to our north, I think. Uh, that is a severe storm. Uh, that is coming supercellular. It'll probably become tornado warned here shortly. This activity we're watching closely, it's not really becoming cellular in nature, which is good news, but these are the storms that are going to be moving into southeast Missouri, the majority of the area, shortly. And then the severe storms off to our west. And you can see here we have a confirmed tornado south of Springfield, and that storm is moving towards this way. So again, we're gonna see a, a lot of warnings, I think, as we head throughout the late night hours, unfortunately. Uh, but for right now, we've got this major tornado that's moving into Pemiscott County as we speak. Uh, it has done damage in the area. Yeah, you're about to say something, Lisa? I, yeah, um, no new reports at the moment, but other than that, yes, there was damage from this. I did put a track on this in case you want to check it out because we're expecting it moving off to the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. This is going to impact, again, areas near Steel. If you're in those locations, get in your safe spot. At around 8 11, it's going to make its way towards Carruthersville. That's going to be, again, then transferring into areas of western Tennessee. So if you're in Lake County, oh, by Ryan County heads up. This will be heading your way, especially if you're near Cloverdale and then Dixie. Something else we'll have to watch very closely. Not just the fact that this so, or this cell has a tornado on it, but all this activity with this line moving into northeastern Arkansas, stretching towards Little Rock, has had several tornado warnings as well. And in particular, this one that's moving along the same track that this cell is right now, that could also cause some damage if that tornado signature holds in areas near Jonesboro, which means we'll have to monitor that because that could move into the exact same locations in the boot heel that are dealing with that tornado warning currently. So even if you're dealing with severe weather now in the boot heel and in Tennessee, there could be more coming your way that we'll be watching very closely over the next couple of hours. Yeah, and here is the tornado moving into Pemiscott County. You can see right on Highway 164 right there. That is our tornado. We're going to take another look to see if we still have a debris signature because we have an updated radar scan. And uh, let's take a look. Yep, it's still on the ground. It's crossing Highway 164 right now. The debris signature is not as strong as it was or as intense, but I'm sure right now it's moving across some, uh, some old cotton fields that no longer have any uh, plants on it. So it's just kind of picking up some dust. So we wouldn't really expect the tornado signature to be that extreme. Now also, it's hard to keep these on the ground for as long as this one's been on the ground. This will likely begin to weaken here shortly, but the storm's not going to weaken. We'll probably see what we call this storm cycle, which means this tornado will die down and another tornado will develop because it's hard to keep one tornado on the ground for a significant amount of time. But we're seeing that tornado right here. And yeah, we're still seeing significant rotation right here as well. And, uh, 
so tornado moving into right now Pemiscott County. You can see State Highway NN. This tornado is going to go just to the north of Steele, but it's going to be close enough that Steele, I want you in your safe spot with this tornado because this has done a lot of damage and uh, we've had reports of damage and, and, and even some possible injuries in, in uh, Arkansas. And I'm worried what we're going to out about the Hornersville area because when it moved to the south side of Hornersville, the debris signature really ramped up. So that tells me that it probably hit something that was pretty significant. And uh, that would definitely be some bad news. But this storm continues to move off to the north and to the east. It'll be going between Carruthersville and Cooter, as you can see here. On this trajectory, it'll probably hit the south side of Crothersville. I think that the casino is right here on the south side of Crothersville. So if you live near that casino, if you know anybody that's at the casino on the south side of Crothersville, give them a heads up. There's a tornado that is headed that way right now. Uh, we want to make sure that we kind of help you out with uh, the different landmarks that are out there. Uh, this line of storms, again, is trying to organize, but it is uh, the parts that's heading into southeast Missouri are struggling right now. As Lisa said, we have another tornado warning that is going to take a very similar track. It'll go probably about five miles farther south than this tornado, but that would still put it in southeastern Pemiscott County. And eventually, if it holds together, that'll be going into uh, western Kentucky as well. But for right now, we've got this tornado that is moving into Pemiscott County. It is headed towards Carruthersville as we speak. And it looks like the debris signature may be a little stronger now. That's a pretty bright debris ball right there that is showing up at the intersection of State Highway NN and 164. So I don't know if there's anything at the corner there that may have got hit, but let's see what the debris signature looks like now. See if it's gotten a little darker. Not a, not a little darker, it's just about the same, but you can see that is the tornado. This is the inflow right here going into the storm that's picking up some leaves or dirt or whatnot. And uh, yeah, there's the tornado. And when we kind of take a look, again, there could be some rain uh, wrapping around this tornado now because it's been going on a long time. And what we'll be watching for is do we get a new circulation? They usually develop on the southeast side of the old tornado. So for you folks in Hornersville, the tornado is out of your area. Zenith, the tornado is out of your area. Uh, Cardwell, the tornado is out of your area. Steel, the tornado is headed your way. Rives, it's headed your way. Uh, I think that's uh, Brachidocious. It's moving uh, towards you right now as well. Um, let me, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's uh, back things out. I want to pan down just a bit. Yeah, no new reports at the moment, but this uh, at least had a report of a power pole on top of a mobile home north of Leechville. So again, definitely confirmed reports of damage within this tornado, which again has been on the ground for a significant time and is going to continue to move into the heartland. Again, Dunklin County, Pemiscot counties have been under the gun for this and will continue to monitor this as it is very likely to move into portions of Lake County as well. Uh, Grant's putting that track up there. So we're going to continue to watch this from what I'm looking at on my end. That debris signature very prominent, something that's not looking at this moment to weaken, which will indicate that this is still a strong system. It's not weakening in strength, so it's something to be taken very seriously as it's moving still to the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. At Covington, get in your basement right now if you have it. If you don't have a basement, get in the lowest floor. Uh, you've got one minute. You probably got about 45 seconds. Covington, this tornado is going to be hitting you. Uh, Shade, it's going to be hitting you at 808. Carruthersville, 815. Cottonwood Grove, about 824. And that's as it gets into Lake County. And then if it were to continue off to the north and to the east, it would be headed towards Union City. Uh, you know what? Matter of fact, let's... Um, let me take this off and I'm going to back things up here briefly and we're going to pan out a little bit and I'm going to track this tornado because it's it's been going with a with a confirmed tornado warning for well over an hour now. So um, hope, hope that means it's going to weaken soon, but I, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon based on the the environment that it's moving into is uh, very, very, very favorable for long track damaging tornadoes. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a we're going to try and do a two hour track, a two hour track on this tornado. And it's going to be hard to do. Well, no, I could probably get to two hours. Okay, so two hours you can see here. And uh, that's going to be 
placing this storm going right over the last tornado warning that we had that went through Graves County and Callaway County. Union City, you've got until about 9 o'clock, 8.59. Uh, you can see Fulton, Kentucky, 9.12. Again, that's a long way away, and then a lot can happen with a tornado between now and then, but this storm has been on the ground for quite some time. And if you're near exit one of I, on I-55, again, that's going to be in the boot heel. That is a location right now where I've gotten a report that the tornado is visible. So uh, that's got to be somewhere in between Steele and to the north of that because that's right where the interstate is. So I, again, think they're, I think at exit, one, at exit one is right here. So, so that's look, where you can so see it north, from that view, so, so, and that's why. But so they can still, they've got a good view of the tornado, so it's still on the ground is what they're saying. Yeah, absolutely. You can see it from that exit. So uh, usually when we get the best views, that's where you're going to be to the south or sometimes off to the southeast of these storms. Um, again, but it can easily become rain-wrapped where you might not be able to see it, and especially since this is a nocturnal event, dangerous to be going outside and trying to look at these tornadoes unless you really know what you're doing. So Grant's been mentioning tracking this steel just to the north. That's where we're seeing again this little indentation here. That's also where we've been tracking on velocity where that where that indication is of uh, rotation. And this really is looking very, wow. very yeah, potent. So uh, Grant, you've been mentioning that folding concept again. It's still looking to be something that we're concerned with as this is moving further into the heartland. Now it's looking to be getting close to just south of Braggadocio in a short while. All right, here's the tornado. Yeah, braggadocio, like you said, right there, the tornado is moving towards you as we speak. This is still on the ground. This has been on the ground causing damage. I'm going to back up and just get an idea. I don't think I have a ruler on here, um, but we can measure it. Um, you know what? I'm going to get off the camera. Just leave this up like we have because I want to get an idea of how long this has been on the ground just to kind of reiterate the uh, situation that we are in. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw uh, a ruler on it. And we've had it on the ground now. If it's been constant, you can see that it's been on the ground for 72 miles. 72 miles. That is a long track tornado. It is hard to get a tornado to stay on the ground that long. Now, once the weather service in, in Memphis, which is responsible for this area, goes out and does a survey, they may find that it touched down, lifted, touched down, lifted. But we've been seeing a significant debris signature for at least 30 miles. So I know this has been on the ground without lifting for 30 miles. So this is a long track, dangerous tornado. This is the type of tornado we were scared that we would see tonight. And you can see it right here. Now, I think I'm picking it up from the, um, I think that just went to the, um, uh, the Paducah, yeah, it's on the Paducah site. I'm interested to see what the radar looks like, the velocity. So it's harder to see from, and I doubt we'll see uh, debris, but if we do see debris, this is going to be interesting because it's going to be hitting this at about 15,000 feet in the air. There's debris. You see that, Lisa? We're yep. seeing debris from, that, wow, that is, that is significant debris. It has just lofted something at least 10, probably 12,000 feet in the air right now. So this is on the ground, and in order to get debris uh, that high up in the air, this is doing significant damage, and unfortunately, it is moving right into Carruthersville. It's going to be going right in towards the Haytai area into Carruthersville. It's going to be crossing uh, probably right near the intersection of, uh, of 55 and 155 is where this is going to go, and it's going to go right in this general area. So, hey, Ty, Carruthersville, Highway 84 in between you, get in your safe spot. Boy, that is a significant hook. We've got a significant um, debris signature, at least we did from, uh, from Paducah. You can still see it. Wow, I actually pulled it up if you if you need to look at the CCs as well. But yeah, you can really see the exact same thing that Grant is showing where that debris ball, that signature, that's going to be that white circle just south of Braggadocio. That's going to be very concerning. Again, more than likely, we're having debris from this tornado lofted into the air to where our radars can at least depict that, hey, this is not natural. This is not rain falling down. These are not just strong winds, but in fact, we have debris 
from this confirmed large tornado on the ground, which Grants mentioned has been on the ground for about 72 miles. That's concerning. This is going to continue again to move off to the northeast at about 50 miles an hour. So looking to cross I-55, it also will cross uh, 155 and make its way just south of Carothersville. So again, really looking to concentrate in an area that doesn't need to see this, especially since it's a populated area. Hey, Ty, you're, this is going to be just to the south of you, but it's close enough that we'll have to watch southern portions of your town as well as this system is going to continue to move through. I'm going to back it up just to give you a quick view really quickly. If you are just tuning in, we are watching strong and severe thunderstorms across the heartland. These warnings are stretching all the way up from central Illinois southeast Missouri over into areas of Arkansas. So that's all the way south of Little Rock. A lot of warnings have been issued overnight. We're only concerned right now with that one warning that's going to be in southern portions of the boot heel. If you are tuning in, I'm just going to zoom up. There's some activity moving into areas near Poplar Bluff, Sykeston, East Prairie. You might be dealing with some thunderstorms and continuing to move further north. There's been a severe thunderstorm warning just to the north of the heartland, north of Iron County, and we'll have to watch if that can clip some of our portions in St. Genevieve County. But for the moment, we look to at least be rather lucky for most of the area dealing with some calm activity. But there are thunderstorms just to the south of areas near the boot heel where that confirmed tornado is that could potentially be dealing with more severe weather moving in. So this will be an area of interest in particular as we continue into the next few hours. This tornado, we have had reports on the ground and still as we're zooming in, we're still noticing that couplet over Bragg so we're going to continue to track this and watch any new more reports that are coming in. Uh, I'm not seeing any other damage reports at the moment, other than at this point they're saying it's moving northeast at 60 miles an hour now. So wow. maybe moving a little bit quicker. It's something to be concerned as we continue to watch this through the evening hours. Yeah, and they just extended the tornado warning. It is now including Lake and Obion County um, because of the significance and I guess because of the speed too. There's, there's the debris, and folks, I'm telling you, hey, Ty Carothersville, I know this area doesn't need anything like this. I, I know 2006, we saw a tremendous tornado move through here and do a significant amount of damage. This tornado is gonna be moving in here. This, is, this tornado, at least velocity-wise, has the potential to be that F3, EF3 type tornado. So that's what we're seeing right here, right now. So let's back things out. Uh, she just said that the weather service now is tracking it at 60 miles per hour. Again, I would track it as well for the speed, but I can't stop things and move things around to get the actual speed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, walk over here and talk with that hook echo there. I have to change the speed on my cell track so we can uh, get you uh, the proper speed on that. And uh, let me do that real quick. Well, when we're watching it, and I'm able to at least track some of the velocities, um, just by looking at this, the velocity couplet on this is picking up winds up to 110, 113 miles an hour. So uh, definitely going to have very strong winds if you're in this area in the boot heel. This is going to be heading towards Carothersville. We're also tracking hail within it. There's been some indication we could have two inch diameter hail or up to it. And that could be the size of an egg. So not only dealing with, again, a tornado threat, but we're also dealing with the threat of extremely strong winds outside of that tornado, as well as possible hail. So don't go outside and look at this, especially with our storm tracker view well above me. You can see it's dark out there. And when we have these nocturnal events, the lightning can play a trick to your eye of really where that tornado will be. A dangerous situation. Get in your basement, the most interior portion of your house if you don't have that in basement. But it seems to be a long-lived tornado that is concerning moving into our southern areas near Carruthers. Yeah, and here's the track. I just tracked this at uh, 60 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. You can see Carothersville 813. That's in six minutes. Uh, Hornbreak, you can see at 835. Union City, 850. And Fulton, Kentucky at 901. So if this continues to move at uh, 60 miles per hour, we're going to be seeing some issues with this storm. So again, we have a dangerous tornado moving into Carothersville right now. A dangerous tornado moving into Carothersville right now. This tornado has done damage. This th th there's the debris signature. It's bright red right there. I'm going to see if uh, the, the CCs match up with that. 
I think they will, unfortunately. And uh, yep, there is the tornado right there. It's moving right south of uh, Hey Tai. It's going to be. If you know that exit, you know where 55 and 155 breaks off. It's moving over there right now. So if you are near that area, that is where the tornado is. So you definitely need to be seeking shelter right now in your basement. If you have it, there's the rotation right here in your basement. If you have one, if you don't have a basement again, you put as many walls between you and the outside as possible by getting on the lowest level of your home. Get into that center room, a closet, a bathroom. Make sure it's not an exterior wall. Try to have as many walls between you and the outside. Another good idea for something like this is to think about it. If you have a baseball helmet, a basket, a, a, a bicycle helmet. So you got you ride your bicycle, you got the helmet. Go ahead and grab that. Put it on while you seek shelter. Anything to help protect you as this moves in. And this is a significant tornado that has been on the ground for quite some time. If if it's been on the ground continuously now, it's been on the ground almost now for 80 miles. We've had uh, confirmed tornado warnings out now for 80 miles. Those purple colors that you see here, that is uh, what we added to the radar to let people know that um, this tornado is on the ground. When we see the warning turn purple, we know it's on the ground. We know it's been confirmed. And uh, you can see a little donut hole. We got rain and debris wrapping around that area right now. It's in the south side of Haytai right now is where we are seeing this tornado. You can see the inflow notch right here, the debris signatures right here. There's the rotation very strong right over, right over Interstate 55 where it branches off on 155 to go towards Dyersburg, Tennessee. That right there is the tornado. It is uh, it has been on the ground for quite some time and the debris signature is even stronger. So it has just hit something significant. Uh, I know there's a couple of there's an exit right here. There may be um, it may be a gas station or something. I know there's a couple of gas stations, I think, right here. Now, I know there's a there's an exit just north of Interstate 155 and the Missouri. The, the rest area is right here. This should stay just to, I mean, it's going to be close to the rest area, but I know there's a lot of farmhouses all along this area. I drive through here all the time. And this is going, this is crossing Interstate 155 right now. That is a significant debris signature. As I pan this out, you'll see that we have the, the 10. It's not quite a 10, but it's about an eight. It's just gone down a little bit. The signature is not quite as much. OK, another tornado warning has been issued. I wonder if Paducah is gone ahead and issued the warning. Uh, no, it's just a continuation of the warning that we're seeing right now. We've got a warning here till 815 and then the warning for Lake County until uh, 845. So they just kind of continue and you can see those hatched marks right there. You see you saw those black lines earlier right there. That tells us that this is a significant tornado. There is a debris signature. It's the tornado's crossing Highway 84 on the east side of Haytai right now. The tornado is on the ground. It is doing damage. It is crossing Highway 84. I know there are some gas stations right here. Uh, I think there's a couple of fast food joints right here. Uh, that tornado is going through that area right now and likely causing damage as we speak. Um, for you folks in Carothersville, the north side of Carothersville, this is where it's going to hit. I know I mentioned the I mentioned the uh, casino earlier. I think this is going to stay just to the north of the casino. Now I'm not 100% sure because I don't know exact location of the casino, but I thought it was just southeast of Carothersville, but it's going to be close. If you're in anywhere near Carothersville, you need to be seeking shelter. If you're in Haytai, you need to be seeking shelter. This is a dangerous tornado. It is on the ground right now. It is about to cross Highway 84, then it's going to cross the Mississippi River and it's going to go into Lake County into Tennessee. So let's kind of follow off to the east to give folks their first alert of this tornado that's moving into Lake County. So if you folks in Ridgely, this is headed your way. This is going to go uh, probably stay just south of Tiptonville, but it's going to be close. So if you're in Tiptonville, you definitely want to be in your safe spot. And yeah, that right there, that's the tornado warning for uh, that um, Paducah put out for. They just kind of filled it in. That's New Madrid County uh, for the southern parts of New Madrid County. You can see Portageville. It looks like this will stay just to the south of Portageville. But as we continue off to the northeast, Dixie, you're in danger with this storm and Union City, you're under the gun. Hornbeak and Troy, all these areas are under the gun 
for this large damaging tornado that if it is still on the ground and it's been continuous, I mean, I know it's on the ground. I just showed you the debris, but if it's been continuous, it's been on the ground now for about 85 miles. Um, this is just really uh, kind of unheard of for this time of the year, folks, to, to be seeing this type of weather. And you can see it is really wrapping up. There's a debris signature. It is just crossed over Highway 84. I'm kind of scared to look at the debris signature. Uh, I'm worried that it has hit something significant with that purple color right there. And yeah, boy, the debris has really dropped down again. So it is now into Lake County, Tennessee. The tornado is crossing the Mississippi River right now. It is now into Lake County, Tennessee. It will cross the Mississippi River again and move back into Pemiscot County before crossing the Mississippi River a third time and going back into Lake County, thanks to the Mississippi River meandering so much. But that is, that is the tornado. Wow, it has been on the ground for quite some time and just a, a very intense again this should be this should be white or pink or red this green area right here uh, but it is folded to the green see the green the re it's just it's just very very intense this this storm uh, especially for this time this time of the year so Let's uh, looks sound like you're about to say something. Uh, well, yeah, so uh, pretty much the only thing I can tell you that they have at least analyzed is this system, which again was all the way in Arkansas, impacted areas of Jonesboro. I'm not sure if the town's called Monet or, or Monette, but that was in Arkansas, and there's actually reports of a building collapsed with people in it. So again, a very dangerous situation. We're watching that front all the way still in Oklahoma. A lot of activity flaring up ahead of that with warnings across Illinois, Missouri, and even into Arkansas. Something that is going to be interesting though, there's been a tornado that has been confirmed and we've been watching that south of Springfield and this is really going to be a favorable area right now, Grant, where that cap is being lifted. So that's going to mean that thunderstorms could potentially be strengthening as they're moving closer into our furthest western counties of southeast Missouri. We're going to continue to watch that area in particular. Again, we're keeping an eye on this very strong tornado that has at least been reported on the ground. That's going to be moving into areas of Lake Portly, but still monitoring uh, tornado warnings, which are going to be issued again. This one that's going to be clipping southern portions of Jonesboro, where this exact tornado in our area, the heartland already hit prior to moving into our area. So what we're going to have to monitor with this again, this is still in a favorable area as well. That's keeping these tornadoes alive if they are at least on the ground. And this will also be moving into the boot heel. That's going to be again for Dunklin and Pemiscott County. So we'll be watching this activity closely as we continue in between eight and nine o'clock. You'll still have some time again. These could be within the next hour or so, but not looking to be a good case scenario right now. That tornado again, not looking to have any other reports at the moment other than that debris signature has really been with us for a while and that's concerning. That means that we're at least indicating that debris is being lofted into the air and that would mean that it's hitting some sort of structures right now. We can see it just passing over that that's where that at least couple it is where the winds are at least going to be turning counterclockwise. That's moving just over the Mississippi River and into Lake County right now. Uh, not seeing too many towns within that, but that's just the north of Carruthersville, if that gives you a picture of where that's located. So this is going to continue to be a concern. It's going to be moving uh, into areas near Wrigley, and that does have at least an elementary school near it. I'm trying to see if I can get any other landmarks on the map um, to see where this is going to be heading, but definitely a couple areas that we're going to be having to watch closely as this is going to be continuing to move not only into areas of western Tennessee now, but with more storms that could be moving into the heartland, causing strong to severe weather throughout the night. So stay tuned with us, please. Uh, we're going to give you at least that quick overview. Everyone is under a tornado watch through tonight, and we could even have activity lingering on into the early morning hours. Please have the KFDS 12 weather app. We'll keep you updated on there, but you'll want to wait to get those alerts if you do plan on going to bed anytime soon. Yeah, and again, this storm is in a very favorable environment. I, I don't see why it would weaken. I mean, the tornado could lift and then it could produce another one. But if we just kind of follow my hand, here's the storm. This is the way it's going to track. It may be actually going a little bit farther north than what I'm doing. So you can see it's going to be going through a good bit of our western Kentucky counties. So we have got a long night ahead of us. 
new storm trying to develop, starting to take on a little bit of a cellular look to them. And what I mean by that is they're starting to break apart. We've got one just southwest of Cape Girardeau that's trying to develop, one near Dexter, one over Poplar Bluff. We can take a look at the winds, and uh, I'll do that here in just a second and uh, zoom into where these storms are. Uh, we know about the tornado. It's in Lake County now. I just want to see if we have any <clears throat> signs of rotation developing in these developing storms, and we do not. Uh, again, these storms have been struggling. I still think they're dealing a little bit with the cap right now, but like Lisa said, it is appearing as though that cap is beginning to weaken. Again, if you're just joining us, the cap is what we talk about, that warm layer of air about 10,000 feet tonight that has really saved a good bit of southeast Missouri, but it is weakening now. So <clears throat> let's take our attention and turn it back down towards the uh, tornado that is on the ground in Lake County. Boy, that is a, well, it's actually crossed. Remember I said it was going to cross the Mississippi River again. It's crossed the Mississippi River again. It is now in uh, Pemiscott County once again, and then it will cross the Mississippi River a third time and get back into Lake County. But there is our tornado, and I won't say possible because it's been on the ground, we think, for, for quite some time. It may have lifted a couple of times, but we've had a confirmed tornado warning out on this for about 85 miles now. Um, there is the, uh, boy, look at that hook. It has really got an intense, an intense uh, inflow notch. And you can see the video you see behind me there, that is our storm tracker headed south. You can see a lot of lightning. <clears throat> Does anybody have an idea of where he is? If you do, just shout at me in my ear. Uh, around New Madrid. So he's going to be driving into the storm. He's not going to get hit by the tornado. This strong tornado will miss him. I will be a little concerned about the line that's moving back into this same area. What I will, would be interested to see if he can make it all the way down to Haytai and see what kind of damage we have in there because we did get a significant debris signature as it crossed Highway 84 east of Haytai. And again, there's a lot of uh, gas stations and fast food joints that go right here at that exit. I think it's exit 19. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it is. Again, I drive down in that area a lot. You can see there's a tremendous amount of lightning with this as well. So I was right, exit 19, good. So here is our tornado right there. We have a pretty, st we, I'm sure we still have a pretty significant debris signature. Wow, that is impressive because it's not really going over uh, populated areas right now. It's just kind of going over some fields unless it picked up, uh, maybe it hit a, a farmhouse or something. But that is a significant debris signature for just uh, hitting um, fields. And, and you can see it's about to cross the Mississippi River again. This is, it's in Pemiscott County and it's about to move into Lake County as we speak. You can see it right here that it's uh, moving in. I'm going to probably have to change my batteries here in a second in my IFB, so Still I'll be moving, walking uh, away. Northeast at about 50 miles an hour. There was a report, a potential report of this as it crossed over I-55, and we talked about that, especially Grant mentioned there are some gas stations in that area. It may have hit a vehicle, so that's something we're watching. Again, if you can and get alerts, don't be driving in this. Don't go outside. Get inside your basement, most interior area area of your room if you can or if your house if you don't have a basement. There's been a confirmed tornado on the ground for a long time and what we're still watching is this tornado warning. I'm watching very closely. That's going to be moving just to the south of Jonesboro. This is moving northeast at about 60 miles an hour. So if I put a track on this right now, that means within 60 miles again, that's going to be hitting into areas near Kennett at about 918. So back into Dunklin and Pemiscott County this again is still going to be in a favorable environment where forcing can allow that storm to survive and potentially keep whether it be a severe thunderstorm warning or tornado warning alive within that. So again, we're moving back to that storm over Carruthersville. Uh, it is looking to at least still have some sort of hook indication on it and a debris signature that's moving right over the Mississippi right now. I'm looking at a couple different sources here. We can really see those colors, those interchanging colors of uh, some of the reds into those blues and purples. Again, that's just moving into Lake County at the moment in that area. Not seeing a on my map, at least I'm trying to look again for some 
uh, some indications of structures. I'm not seeing a lot, so that's good news. But again, knowing that we had a confirmed tornado on the ground that's already caused damage south of the heartland into the boot heel, this is likely going to be making its way into areas near uh, Ridgely and just south of Winburg. So this is going to be a potential hazard as we're continuing to move into the next couple of hours. Again, still planning on tracking that as we're moving through. Grant's coming over here, checking out some stuff. We're just going to give you that look again that there are tornado warnings along the in the heartland outside of the heartland we're still going to be tracking thunderstorms at least continuing to move in from our west some of those are having severe thunderstorm warnings and still a tornado warning which that looks to be weakening slightly we're going to watch that area as some favorite activity could occur we're also going to be watching those storms south of Jonesboro and I'm going to zoom in here this is not a tornado warn system but if you are in areas of Stoddard County Butler County County, especially near Poplar Bluff, some heavy thunderstorms could be occurring right now. That is not looking to at least turn into a tornado warning or anything severe at the moment. So yes, you'll have some nasty storms moving through. No, that is not looking and being severe. Some showers moving into western Kentucky having a little bit of an intense thunderstorm just south of Princeton and along Highway 91. So if you're in those areas, you'll be hearing some thunder and lightning. Right now, though, zooming into southern Illinois, you're looking clear, but that does not mean that you'll at least be dealing with those calm conditions through the night. More thunderstorms are starting to pop up, and in fact, we're noticing a little cell there in western portions of Perry County. That's going to be in Missouri, crossing over Highway T. We're also zooming into a cell here that's moving into southern portions of Cape Girardeau County just north of Delta and this will be making its way towards Cape Girardeau but again the velocity on this not looking too impressive so we're not worried about again any kind of rotation within that the biggest threat area that again we're focusing on we've been tracking this for a while if you're just tuning in it's really important that we're telling you about this this is going to be the storm moving over Carruthersville and moving over Tiptonville right now moving into areas of Tennessee uh, the warning still goes for about another 19 minutes, but man, it's still hanging on to yeah, it'll be some extended. of its signature. I, I so no doubt more than likely. I agree with you, Grant. That is going to be extended and we're going to have to continue to track this uh, and potentially again. This is looking to continue to move into that northeast direction, which means that's eventually going to be moving into Kentucky uh, areas near Fulton, edging southern portions of Hickman County as well as Graves County. If that continues to be extended so, far enough, Lisa, look at the other source. Look at the GR. I drew a line of the debris signature so you can kind of see where headed and kind of name off some of the towns because I don't have that line with me. Yeah, you yeah, some of those towns um, that's in Fulton County, at least that's going to be it's just south of Hickman, but that is going to move into areas near Tip Tiptonville. Get in shelter now. This is an extreme debris signature. This is an extreme debris. This is a very strong tornado. Sorry, Lisa. No, it's all right. But I just want to folks Tiptonville get in your safe spot. Uh, this is headed right towards you. This is a significant debris signature that is moving into your neck of the woods. This is a large damaging tornado that now has been on the ground for about 95 miles, possibly if it has gone nonstop. But I just wanted to shout that out because I knew that the debris signature looked stronger. I wanted to make sure Tiptonville, your first alert, you got about five minutes. Get in your shelter. This storm is dangerous. All right, Lisa, and when you get a second, go back over and I want you to read off some of those towns along the line. What I did is I drew a line from the debris signature when it was in Dunkling County to where it is right now and extended that off. So uh, what are some of the towns that are going to be impacted by this? Yes, yeah, so some, together? some of those towns that is going to be moving uh, just over to the south of Tiptonville as that moves through Fulton County that will be entering Kentucky. That's going to be just off to the southeast of Hickman. We're also going to be making it go to the northern portions of Wingo and that's going to cross directly over Mayfield. So if you're in Graves County, Mayfield heads up there. This is heading your way. Yeah. If that continues on, that'll move exactly over Benton. So this is going to be a concern, especially stretching into uh, areas of Graves County, stretching into areas of Marshall County and possibly northern portions of Callaway County. So watching this as this will continue to move through. Unfortunately, you know, this is just not weakening. Right, as Grant right. mentioned, that favorable environment. Yeah, really uh, along when the I lines. drew that line, I knew it was Mayfield. I mean, that's a long way out. A lot can happen between now and then Mayfield, but I want to give you your first alert. Also, I want to give you your first alert. We do have a new tornado warning out. I think it's in western Kentucky. Let me go ahead and uh, hit this. And uh, yeah, we've got a new tornado warning out 
right here. This is Princeton. It's Caldwell County. It goes until 9 o'clock with this storm. The rotation is located right here. It's going to be moving out of our area shortly. You can kind of make it out right here. And we just had another tornado warning issued. I'm pretty sure it's probably for Fulton and Hickman counties is what I'm going to guess. No, they just continued the tornado warning for Obion County and Lake County. I I can't imagine that Fulton County won't go under a uh, tornado warning here shortly for this cell as well. Again, that is the tornado. It is on the ground. It is doing damage. It is very intense. You need to be in your safe spot. If you are near Tiptonville, you need to be underground. If you have a basement, if you don't, you need to put as many walls between you and the outside as again, we've been tracking a very large damaging tornado for quite some time. And we just, it's in an environment where I just don't think it's going to die. And it's going to continue to go off to the north and east. And again, it's going to cross between Fulton and Hickman in Kentucky. So for you folks in Fulton County and Hickman County, Kentucky, I, I, I foresee a tornado warning coming out for you shortly because of this. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I want to go, we've talked a lot about that. I wanted to harp on Tiptonville because this we know is on the ground. We know it's doing damage and we know it is significant, but we now have another storm that we need to be concerned with. So I want to take a look at the storm that is just to the south of Princeton. Again, it is not as intense as this storm, but it does have some rotation with it and it's going to be moving out of Caldwell County here pretty quickly. Yeah, and that's moving off to the northeast at about 40 miles an hour, but it's just on the edge of our viewing area. So um, if you're going to be, we're going to zoom into some of those towns. If there is any, I'm not seeing too many towns showing up, but other than that, more roads. Uh, highway 91 and highway, I believe it is... 672 is yeah. what it is. So if you're in those areas, certainly you'll want to take shelter again, uh, moving off to the northeast at 40 miles an hour. So really, this is going to continue to push out of our area, but we're still going to be tracking at the moment that very large observed tornado. This will be impacting areas near Tiptonville, moving into Lake County as we're heading into the next couple of hours. So um, also still tracking again some extended warnings that we're noticing from tornado tornado warnings just out near West Plains. Again, this is going to be to the southeast of Springfield, and those will also be inching their way towards areas of Carter Ripley County. So if you're in those locations, it's been rather calm this evening. You haven't seen a lot of activity, but there again will be more activity with this line moving our way over the next several hours. Yeah, let's uh, take a look again. This is the uh, this is the tornado warning that is just south of Princeton. Again, it's just there it is. There's the tornado. It's about to cross highway uh, looks like 126 and 672. Uh, it is fairly weak. Uh, it is not as intense as what's headed into Tiptonville. I just want to give you a first alert. If you are in southeastern uh, Caldwell County, get in your safe spot for about another 10 minutes. It'll be out of your area in 10 minutes. Princeton, this will not hit you. This will stay off to your south and east. We have another tornado warning that has been issued, and that's what I was thinking. We've got the tornado warning has been issued for Fulton and Hickman counties. Again, the purple shading means a confirmed tornado because we showed it to you on radar, and uh, it is a da damaging tornado. That's why you see the black lines there because of the threat to life and property. So um, I want to uh, zoom back and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pan back down to the tornado warning that is that is causing the damage really bad right here. And again, we're watching these storms and folks, Southern Dunklin County. Again, we haven't had this turn purple, so this is probably still just a radar indicated tornado, but you're going to see some damaging winds, very heavy rain and lightning for these folks that are probably having to clean up right now after that tornado just went through the, the areas of Southern Dunklin County and Pemiscott County. The tornado now is in Lake County as we speak. Let's zoom on in, see if we can, boy, there's, a, there's the debris signature more than likely. It's going through the south side of Tiptonville right now. So let me uh, take a look at the shear marker on it. Uh, there it is, wow, very intense rotation, very intense rotation. The debris signature, very intense debris signature too. Look at that tight debris signature right there with it. So uh, again, Tornado is on the ground right now, moving to the south side of Tiptonville. It is going to be crossing into Obion County here shortly. It's going to be going along Tennessee Route 22. This tornado will be headed towards the Dixie area. Uh, I 
think the community of is Woodland Mills. I know it's just to the to the northwest of Union City. I want to zoom into this area because they got hit by a pretty big tornado in 2014. Um, yeah, right here. So Woodland Mills, this tornado is headed your way. Unfortunately, I know uh, you guys had to, uh, to deal with a pretty significant tornado a few years ago, uh, but unfortunately, it looks like you have another tornado headed your way and we do have a debris signature on the ground. So this is going through Tiptonville right now and it will be crossing into Obion County here very shortly right along Highway 22 and Tennessee Highway 22. The circulation should stay just to the northwest of Union City, but it's going to be headed towards that Woodland Mills area and then moving into Fulton County just to the southeast of Hickman, Kentucky. So we have got a busy, busy night going on. Again, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of uh, storms going on here. Was somebody talking to me there? There was something going on there. Well, I want to circle back to something, Grant. There, I, there's okay. a confirmed tornado now moving in the Jonesboro yep. area with that storm. That's exactly what I was going to show you, actually. Uh, Jonesboro, that's going to be that confirmed tornado within that almost the exact same path that this very destructive warning has gone through. So uh, what we're noticing, Jonesboro now tornado that rotation is going to be just off there. We can notice that couplet off to the southeast of Jonesboro confirmed tornado on the ground. The tornado warning that we've been dealing with that was just to the south of Jonesboro. So this looks to be a slightly further north, but I put a track on this. It's moving northeast at about 60 miles an hour. That's going to be moving into the boot heel. Dunklin County, you will be under the gun again. This could reach areas near Leechville, which actually had injuries reported reported around this area uh, and even a couple fatalities from the previous tornado. So with this one moving through needs to be taken just as serious as we're having these storms continue to move through in the evening. That should be making its way towards Kennett at about 928. This is going to have major impacts again if this tornado can even hold up as it's moving into the boot heel. Something we're noticing again, I put that track on the current tornado that we are watching in areas of Lake County. That's going to be moving into North northwestern portions of Obion County. It's going to be moving over uh, areas of Fulton County as well as Hickman County and into Graves County. And there's at least some towns that you can see on there. Union City at 850, Fulton at 901, Dukedom at 911, and Mayfield at 922. So really continuing to maintain its strength, cause a lot of damage, and we could potentially see that maintain its strength as well, which it likely will moving into western Kentucky as we're heading through again the next hour. This again is a very dangerous situation and we're not just tracking this being the only storm of the night, but more that are going to come as we head into the upcoming hey, Lisa, hours. do me a favor. Yeah, you've got the, just drag the radar. I want to go a little farther east and look at the storm that is moving out of Caldwell County. You see the tornado warning is just right above your shoulder. Um, if we go if we go towards uh, Caldwell County, just kind of get, yeah, keep going. No, in. go, go. It's the tornado that's near Princeton, Kentucky. Yep. So you got to go a little bit further. Yeah. Okay. So that tornado is moving out. I just want to make sure. I know we told people about 10 minutes it'd be out of Caldwell County. I don't want to forget about the folks in Caldwell County, but we definitely have a, uh, a possible tornado there. Uh, but we are getting, um, okay, what are we? Two reported touchdown. Numerous houses have been destroyed. Okay, that's what I was. And that, that rotation that, within was, that that tornado is across the little, county line, so there it's you go. out of our area. It's crossing so. over, and we can see just by that one little speck, but that's looking a little bit weaker. So you should be in the clear if you're in Caldwell County. That was the one we were tracking south of Princeton, but that is only again one of numerous tornado warnings that we're going to be watching through the night. So we've got uh, officers actively rendering aid in Dunklin County. So in southern Dunklin County, please stay out of that area. Uh, we've had reported at least two tornadoes have touched down. Uh, more than likely, we had one major tornado and a satellite tornado that went around it based on what it looked like on radar. Uh, numerous houses have been destroyed and there are reports that people are trapped. Uh, so uh, again, that's the storm that is headed into Kentucky right now. That's moving into Obion County, Tennessee, and then eventually moving into Fulton and Hickman counties. This is a dangerous, dangerous situation. It seems as though this tornado may have been on the ground for nearly 100 miles now. And I hate the fact that we're seeing a confirmed tornado in Jonesboro now. I just checked the chat out of Memphis. 
And yes, it is on the ground. There's a report of it on the ground. And unfortunately, folks that are going to be uh, rendering aid for you folks, I know there's probably some emergency managers watching us in Dunkling County, Sheriff's Department, police. There is another tornado headed there. So please get that warning out to your folks. Not under a warning yet, but there's another tornado that is headed close to the same area where people are rendering aid right now for houses that have been destroyed. And based on the reflectivity, that doesn't surprise me. Based on the, um, based on a lot of the things we're at, uh, very, very intense, intense weather. So here's the tornado. It's moving into Obion County now. You can see it. It's going to be moving into Fulton and Hickman counties. We're going to zoom in a little bit more on it. And uh, wow, that is just a text. Like I said earlier, I mean, when you look at you know, Lisa and I have done this. We had to take severe weather classes in college and they give you the textbook and they say, OK, here's what a tornado looks like. It's easy when they look like this. I mean, the, the tough thing is when there's a quick little spin ups, you got to find them. This is no doubt, folks. Big hook right here. Debris ball right there moving across the lake, moving into Obion County right now. A significant tornado. Sky. OK, the sky cam is from UT Martin. OK, OK, Martin, Tennessee. So uh, again, this is a little bit west of Martin, Tennessee, but uh, maybe we can see some some lightning flashes or something from the storm here shortly. But there it is, a very significant area of rotation. And uh, let's see if we still have a debris signature. Gosh, we still have a debris. This thing has been showing a debris signature since before it moved into Dunkling County. So uh, this is going to be one of the longest track tornadoes that, that, that I, if this has been continuous, I, I've never tracked one continuous on the ground this long. I know the Perryville tornado was on the ground for 50 something miles. We tracked it weakening and then we tracked it redeveloping. This one, we haven't seen that debris signature go away. We haven't, at least for 80 miles, the way it looks right now. Uh, and with reports of houses destroyed, folks in Dixie, this is headed your way. Woodland Mills, this is headed your way right now. This is a damaging tornado that has caused injuries, Unfortunately, we're getting reports of fatalities just outside of our area. Hopefully we didn't see any fatalities other areas, but this has been a damaging tornado and it is still on the ground and it is moving through northwestern Obion County now and eventually will be moving into the uh, Hickman County and Ful Fulton Hickman County of um, western Kentucky. So let's let's get everybody caught up to date. Let's take a little breath here again. I wanted to make sure that for you folks in Caldwell County, I told you we weren't going to forget about you. Uh, that circulation has moved out of your area. The circulation was much weaker and we didn't have a signature of a big tornado on the ground. That's why we've been focusing on this tornado in Union, near Union City now. We've got another tornado, unfortunately, that is moving into southern Dunkling County in about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, unfortunately. Again, for, for you emergency managers and police departments and sheriff's departments that are watching us in Pemiscott County and in Dunkling County that are out there helping people right now, trying to get people out of collapsed homes from damage from the first tornado, there is another tornado moving that way. I want you to please be safe. And also we have our storm tracker that's gonna be headed towards that area as well. And I wanna make sure that our storm tracker, Nolan stays safe as well. So I'm gonna be watching that closely. And uh, I see the storm tracker there and I'm, I'm not sure exactly where he is now, but I wanna make sure that we keep him safe throughout this event. I know he's gonna go see what exactly has happened in that area. Now I wanna pan out to the west to just show you what's coming. We've got uh, tornadoes. This every once in a while, this storm has had purple shading on the warnings with confirmed tornadoes. Uh, it is moving off to the northeast. Um, we'll see if it holds together. It looks like it's turning a little more to the northeast, which means it could be weakening. This looks to be struggling. It still tells me that this area right here, the cap could really be holding its own right now, and that could be helping us out tremendously. But we're starting to get new development here, pretty significant uh, from Cape Girardeau south towards Poplar Bluff. So before we go and look at uh, this tornado again. Hey, something uh, to note, Grant, that, yeah. uh, that the current tornado we're watching, I can still see that debris signature just off to the uh, northeast of Samberg and uh, or Samsung, I think it is, or Samberg. So that's an area we're watching. There has at least been some reports coming in that the uh, Samsung 
and maybe it's a typo, but it looks like Sandberg t uh, Fire Department had a direct hit to the fire station and that there are some still people trapped in structures that uh, this the storms passed through and possibly so Sandberg there. I so, just I, yeah, I had it on the on the map right there. Yeah, so that's going to be right where that little hook indication so, is and that's going to be where right where that uh, that that couple so Sandberg the, you're saying that they're saying that the fire department is taking a direct hit. Unfortunately, they're they're saying Samsung, Tennessee, but no, here you go. I was just, I was going to say, I think there was a, a typo in there. It is yeah, Sandberg, Sandberg. So their yeah. fire department just had a direct hit and really that's where that debris signature still is. So uh, some of those towns, I know we, we marked that line on here that this is going to be coming towards next. That's going to be Woodland Mills. That's going to be right on the border before it moves into areas of Fulton County. Then that's going to continue off to the northeast towards areas near Crutchfield. That's going to move right to the northern portions of Wingo and Graves County, then that will continue almost making a direct hit to Mayfield in Graves County. So this is going to be something we'll continue to watch past Mayfield that looks to then take a direct hit into areas of Benton. So really still having a very potent hook signature on that, as well as that velocity couplet, which is going to indicate that yes, we are having rotation within this. We've had the debris signature on this for a long time now. There's been damage reports. There's been pot potential um, injuries and people who are trapped. Police take shelter and take this very seriously. We're not forgetting other areas in the heartland, but again, this is a dangerous situation. If you are in other areas of southeast Missouri right now, we're really just tracking some thunderstorms which could be producing heavy rain, a lot of lightning, and that's going to be in areas from Kulin heading up towards Dexter and Oran. This again, not looking to be severe, but it is still going to have some gusty winds within it that could be close to 40 miles an hour. So if you're going to be in areas near Oran, even heading towards Cape Girardeau and heading over the river in Alexander County, just plan that you'll have some thunder, some lightning, gusty winds and heavy rain heading your way. That big threat's going to be the tornado, which we're watching right now, as well as the potential for another potential tornado just to the south of uh, Jonesboro that we've been tracking that will be moving into Dunklin County within the next hour or so. Yeah, so a very, very volatile evening is what we're seeing right now. And uh, let's take a look at the shear inside this storm. It looks as though it may be trying to finally cycle. I'm not, I'm not positive. It looks like we've got one rotation here and a new rotation that is trying to form. Wow, boy, that just really, that is a strong rotation right there. Um, I noticed that the debris signature was not as great, but there is still a little signature debris right there. But that velocity is really tight right there. I want to do something else. I want to take a look at... Um and this environment is really becoming uncapped very quickly. So Grant's mentioned this when we talked about an environment that's capped, there's warmer air that's preventing those thunderstorms to strengthen. But since we're removing that, we're allowing those storms to strengthen and remain strong. So that's going to be moving through and we're tracking this warning, at least continuing as far as it's been into areas of Tennessee and so, moving into Kentucky. So we just put the velocity on there. The south side of the rotation is moving. The winds are blowing towards the radar 117 miles per hour. The rotational, the gate to gate shear is 141 miles per hour. Uh, we're talking, <clears throat> if it's on the ground, we're talking more than likely an EF3 tornado that has caused a lot of damage so far and continues to cause damage. Now, this storm is going to be moving off to the northeast, again, about 50 miles per hour. Uh, every once in a while, it fluctuates between 45 and 60. So we'll just say 50 miles per hour. This couplet is going to be crossing into Kentucky in about 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. You know what? Let's go ahead and, and track to see when it will cross into uh, Kentucky. I'm not going to do a full hour because I'm not out far enough. But as it goes off to the northeast, you can see the time there. So that's 10 minutes. It's going to be moving towards the Mayfield, Kentucky area. You can see, I think I got 30 minutes on there. It's going to be getting into Graves County there. Dixie, 849. You got two minutes. Get it in your safe spot. We've mentioned you, Dixie, for quite some time. I've been talking about you, Woodland Mills, for quite some time as well. Remember back in 2014, you got hit by a pretty big tornado. This one looks stronger than that hit there in 2014. This is headed right your way as well. 855. Crutchfield 907, Hollyfield at 917. Again, this has been a tornado that we've been tracking for an amazing amount of time, how, how far it's been on the ground. Um, the tornado, wow, it just 
just kind of recycles. It looks like it's getting stronger again as the hook is getting more defined as we speak. And that latest velocity even looked a little stronger. You see that right there. Let's see if we still have a debris signature. Right now, look at that. We don't have a debris signature, which tells me that this may be cycling, which means that the first tornado, I was looking at two rotations and it looked like the north one has weakened and a new one is trying to form. So I think we right now do not have a tornado on the ground, but are about to have another tornado on the ground because this storm is not weakening anytime soon. These storms, it's just hard to maintain one tornado on the ground for this long of a time. And it looks like it's cycling up again when I looked at the winds and it looks like there's a new couplet that is forming right here. See, here's what I'm talking about. That's the, remember what we were talking about when I was talking about Cardwell, how these will turn to the left? Well, that tornado was turned to the left. See how it did that? It's following the mesocyclone and that tornado is weakening, it's turning to the left. Here's our new tornado that is forming on the south side and it will probably become pretty strong and continue to move off to the north and to the east. It is gonna go through the uh, Dixie area. It's gonna go through Woodland Mills. Hopefully it stays aloft while it's moving through those areas, but I just, I got to think when I look at the environment that this storm is moving into, it is very, very favorable to get these type of circulations down to the ground. So we have a thunderstorm right now, a supercell thunderstorm that is cycling. We have a new tornado that is trying to develop right over Highway 22 to the west of Union City. It's going to be moving into the Dixie area. It's going to be moving into the Woodland Mills area. Hopefully this one will stay aloft and not touch down, but based on the environment that we're seeing, I have a hard time believing we're not gonna get another tornado out of this. Is this gonna be headed right towards Woodland Mills and then crossing over into Fulton County, uh, Kentucky. So you've got, uh, Lisa's got something interesting. This is from the first time we started tracking damage. Is that what you're doing right there? On the yeah, I've been trying to track when we've seen some of that damage, which means that I added a ruler on this. You could tell based on where it's wow. at now. That's about 117 miles that this has been on the ground. That is excessive for a tornado to be on the ground for that period of time. And that's what we're going to continue to watch as, as Grant's mentioned. It's cycling and it potentially, yes, could at least lift up, but even if it moves back down that's still going to be part of the same cell which produced that tornado moving through Dunklin Pemiscott counties into Lake County and now that's going to be heading into areas again that's going to be near Woodland Mills so not looking to be a great situation but the thing is is as this continues to move through that's going to be moving off into areas of Kentucky if you are going to be and see if I can zoom into some of these towns here if you're going to be in areas still you can see most of Fulton County and Hickman County that are under that tornado warning that really looks to impact areas again to the south of Hickman, but still it could cause at least some wind damage if you're in those areas Some very strong winds around the center of circulation. And then we'll continue to track that continuing on that northeasterly path near 50 miles an hour into areas near Mayfield. It really hasn't deviated too much from the initial path when it's been moving through, but because of that, that's causing at least an easier track for us on what towns that's currently going Going to hit next as this continues to move through though there's been a lot of reports that have been hit down or have been uh, at least of this touching down to damaged uh, buildings structures people who've been tracked under debris important to please take this seriously get in your safe spot as this continues to move through uh, right now this warning at least is put out until another 38 minutes from now so we're continuing to see this at least for 840 or no it's it was issued at 841, but until 930. And really with the atmosphere that it's in, it's probably going to continue to thrive off of it and not look to weaken. That could extend again that warning past 930. And that's likely what's going to happen based on what we've seen. So yeah. impressive that this has been on the ground for at least 117 miles thus far yeah, and it, probably is going to have more problems through the night. And, and again, it looks like it's it's cycling. I, I, I'm hoping that it's not on the ground right now, but I Again, that new velocity couplet is looking stronger. Now, I want to bring a little bit of good news to this situation just, just briefly, because I know, again, we have some folks that are EM managers and sheriff's departments that are helping people out in southern Dunklin County and southern Pemiscot County. The tornado that was on the ground near Jonesboro that was headed that way, that storm has weakened. Notice the tornado warning is over, and we're not seeing much in the way of what appears to be 
a tornado. There is a little weak rotation near Paragold that's going to be headed in that way. Not to say it couldn't strengthen back up, but earlier there was a very tight couplet to the northwest of Jonesboro where it touched down. And so that's good news right now, at least for parts of southern Dunklin County and uh, Pemiscott County that just got hit extremely hard by what appears to be a significant tornado. So here it is. Uh, it looks like it's wrapping up pretty significantly once again. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think it is cycling like I was. Oh, wow. Look at that velocity. Yeah, it's cycling up folks in Fulton County, Kentucky, the central parts of Fulton County, Kentucky. You need to be in your basement right now. If you have one, if you don't have one, uh, put as many walls between you and the outside. We've got a new tornado that is forming just uh, near the Woodland Mills area. It's going to move into between Hickman and Woodland Mills right along Highway 166. This is going to be headed in towards uh, Fulton County and Hickman County. Eventually, uh, we just got a severe thunderstorm warning. So let me uh, take a look at this to see where this is. And it is for uh, new storms that are for forming near Dexter down to Malden. Uh, we've got this is for southern Stoddard County and parts of New Madrid County until uh, 945. And uh, our radar is indicating a little bit of a weak mesocyclone forming here. So we'll have to wait and see if we get a, a spin up. This would be headed towards the Sykeston area if it holds together. So let's get back to the uh, tornado that is moving through the Woodland Mills area. You can see this intense uh, inflow, the hooks right here. I'm going to take a look at the debris signature, see if it, has sh it is showing back up. I don't see a telltale sign of a debris ball yet, so I don't see, I don't see the debris. So hopefully we, do we won't see it, but uh, it looks as though it's really wrapping up once again and that we may be having a tornado developing as we speak that is moving on the Obion County, Fulton County line, moving into Western Kentucky. If you live anywhere near Woodland Mills, whether you're in Obion County or you're close to Woodland Mills in Fulton County, get in your safe spot, get in that basement if you have it. If you don't have a basement, get to the lowest room in your house, the lowest level in your house in an interior room, put in as many walls between you and the outside as possible as we have a uh, storm that has produced a significant amount of damage. Unfortunately, uh, this is kind of what we were concerned with. I, I you know, I honestly thought we'd probably see one or two storms that are like this. Hopefully this is the only one we see that is this strong uh, because it has caused a lot of issues. But we do have uh, a severe thunderstorm warning here again, storm near Malden that is moving into uh, Stoddard County and into Madrid County. I'm going to zoom in just to see it doesn't have a very cellular shape to it. It kind of looks like a multi cell right now, so I'm not overly concerned about uh, a tornadic development with it. But well, there's something that may be trying to get going again. There's a lot of shear in the atmosphere, so I'll have to watch this southwest of Dexter. Doesn't look like a tornado right now, but it, but it's hinting. It's more of a bow echo shape where we could get a quick spin up go in southern Stoddard County if that continues. And then that would be moving south of Dexter and then moving to the northern parts of New Madrid County. So that is a concern. Let's let's uh, back things up and take a look at the entire heartland. Once again, we've got a significant storm that's produced a uh, significant tornado. It's now moving into Fulton and Hickman counties in Kentucky. This storm that is still just uh, out to our west, it has produced tornadoes from time to time and it's going to be headed towards Reynolds County and then it will be headed towards Madison County. Uh, shortly, uh, so we'll have to keep watching that if it can hold together. Notice we still have a tremendous void of activity here. That uh, cap, that warm layer of air has really saved a good bit of southeast Missouri. Uh, we can follow this line down. You can see some more tornado warnings. That would probably stay just to our south. Although it'll be close to hitting Weekly County, so we'll have to monitor that as well. And let's see what's going on with the line back to the west. Again, things are struggling. Just out ahead of the front, we've got some severe storms to the southeast of Fayetteville. Uh, and then we'd have to watch and see what happens with this storm that is moving across the White River. That'll be moving in towards uh, the heartland here shortly if it holds together. So we just kind of gave you an update on where everything is. Again, for you folks that are watching, for you uh, sheriff's departments and emergency managers that are helping out in southern Dunklin County and southern Pemiscott County, you got a thunderstorm headed your way. Earlier it did have a tornado. Uh, it is weakened now. So, uh, but you're still going to have to be dealing with rain and the possibility of some small hail, which would definitely hinder those uh, 
re relief uh, efforts that are going on with the folks that are trapped in their houses and it's just a bad situation in those areas. Again, we've got a storm that is really wrapping up right now. Probably seeing some large hail in Hickman, Kentucky. The tornado, if it is on the ground, is just to the east, southeast of Hickman. This is where we would see the tornado touch down. You can see the winds wrapping in with the inflow notch, precipitation running around it. We'll take a look at the reflex or the velocity. We definitely have a, a big spin here. So there is a possible tornado. Again, we haven't seen the debris signature in a while, which is good news and hopefully that will continue. Uh, no debris signature right now. Nope, that is really not lined up with uh, any shear. Um, so, but we'll continue to watch it. There's the possible tornado. You can really see that right there crossing Highway 166. Again, uh, this will still be on the ground. Just because we're not getting a debris signature doesn't mean it's not on the ground. The radar beams having to go through a significant amount of rain and hail to pick this up. So it could be suffering from a little attenuation. Usually these bigger radars do not but uh, it could be still on the ground. Just because we're not seeing a debris signature doesn't mean that we don't have a tornado on the uh, Matter of fact, look at that little dot that just popped up right there. That's right where the circulation is. So I think, <clears throat> I think it finally may have cycled and we could have another tornado on the ground. Let's see, the debris is probably lagging a little bit behind it. Yeah, oh wow. Yes, this is a tornado. It has just touched down. It is in Fulton County. That is a significant debris signature. It has hit something that's fairly significant along Highway 166. There it is. Uh, we watch this cycle. The new tornado has formed. That is a significant debris signature in uh, parts of Fulton County, Kentucky. If you are in Fulton County, Kentucky to the east of Hickman, get in your safe spot now. Get in your basement. This is a significant debris signature that just popped up. That's what I saw right there, that purple signature. That is not rain, that is not hail. Something has been hit and the radar is picking it up. So we are seeing a significant debris signature, <clears throat> probably a, a strong tornado again with that debris signature. All right, I'm gonna back things up just a bit. Um, no, no reports on that, um, but that is something to watch. I still want to take it back to, I actually put a track on that severe thunderstorm warning, so we're okay. not forgetting about areas in uh, Stoddard County, but we still have that severe thunderstorm warning for areas of southern portions of Stoddard County and uh, heading into New Madrid County. That'll also include southern portions of Scott County near Sykeston. Really not seeing as much of a, uh, of a wind rotation with this, but rather looking to have that bow signature, which means as I put a track on that, we could be seeing some 60 mile per hour wind gusts, so damaging winds. That could make it to Sykeston within the next, uh, let's see, it's about 901 within the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, that also be heading towards East Prairie by 930 and Cairo by 945. So not watching a tornado warning on that storm, but it is a severe thunderstorm warning. So plan still on having very strong winds and maybe we're just still going to track some small hail within these in southern portions of uh, Stoddard County and moving over New Madrid County and just clipping southern Illinois. That big story that Grant's been tracking, that's that confirmed tornado warning. Been on the ground for what seems to be at this point will be close to 120 miles. Uh, still getting some reports yeah, of debris moving through, but now we're, a, they're a, continuing that warning is what yeah. I'm looking at right now. We've got, by the way, the, the storm that you were talking about in Stoddard County winds 54 miles per hour with that storm at the airport in Poplar Bluff. Um, that is our tornado, a very strong debris signature. So this storm has cycled once again, and we have a significant tornado on the ground right now. That is our tornado. You can see it. The intersection of 94 and 239 in Fulton County, we have a strong tornado on the ground right now moving through this area. This is the Hickman County line, Fulton Hickman County line right here. <clears throat> I want to back things up just a bit. And uh, wow, that is that is a significant debris signature, folks. I really want you to take this seriously. If you are anywhere in the eastern parts of Fulton County, uh, this storm is going to be headed towards the Clinton area. 
Special and that's just south of Moscow, in case you're wondering. Yeah. I know it's not showing up there, but Moscow, if you're in that location, definitely take cover. This is going to be just to the south of your location, and then it's going to move to the north of Crutchfield shortly after. Extremely, extremely strong winds with this. So the velocity is showing some very strong winds. So this is, again, probably a significant tornado. The debris signature is significant and uh, the velocities are significant. And again, this is going to be moving to the southeast side of Clinton along Highway 41 or 51, excuse me, between Clinton and Fulton. You need to be in your safe spot. And one of the bigger cities in Graves County, Mayfield, Kentucky, uh, this is going to be headed close to your area. It may go just to your north, but this is a significant tornado. This is a new tornado, I think. Again, it looked like the thunderstorm did what we call cycled. The tornado finally weakened and dissipated. I showed you those two circulations. The southern one intensified rapidly. There it is. That's the new circulation and the new tornado that is on the ground right now. A significant debris signature is showing up about to cross into Hickman County out of Fulton County as we speak. So there it is. A tornado is on the ground doing damage as we speak, and it has apparently hit something pretty significant. I mean, this is what the Perryville signature looked like. If you remember, we did Perryville, Mayfield, Kentucky signature we showed. That was a strong EF3, wasn't quite this dark, but this is very significant, folks. We have a large tornado on the ground moving through Fulton County, about to move into Hickman County. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and get some of these roads here and uh, let you know where you need to be seeking shelter. Again, we've had major damage with this tornado in southern Dunklin County, Pemiscott County, houses destroyed, injuries, people trapped. Well, here it is now. It's headed towards Tommy Road, Sawmill Road, um, Clinton Moscow Road, uh, Highway uh, 1529, Highway 239, all these areas that I'm mentioning, get in your basement now if you have one. If you do not have a basement, put as many walls between you and the outside by uh, getting to that lowest level on your, in your house. That is the tornado. That is not hail. That is not rain. That is debris that the radar is picking up. And it is a significant amount of debris. It matches up perfectly with this strong rotation that is moving through the area. And again, this rotation is going to be moving towards the intersection of 51 and 1529. Okay, we got a new tornado warning and it's been continuing this tornado. Yeah, look, so, so here's what, um, Here's what's going on. Um, we've extended this tornado well off to the east based on what we're seeing. <clears throat> we want to give everybody a heads up. The National Weather Service wants to do that too. Mayfield, Kentucky, we're also seeing fair dealing. So we've got parts of Marshall County now under a tornado warning and Graves County because we have a significant tornado on the ground right now. And this tornado, this storm has been producing tornadoes now <clears throat> for close to 130 miles. 130 miles and uh, it's, it just doesn't, there is nothing to impede its development. There's a lot of warm, moist air out here to the south and east of it flowing into the storm. So unfortunately, this is going to continue, it looks like. So um, <clears throat> there we go. Let's uh, back things out just a bit because we've got an intense tornado that is right here moving into Hickman County as we speak. An intense, dangerous look at that hook. That is just wrapping up. That is very intense. And the National Weather Service in um, Paducah has gone ahead and said, you know what? We're going to go ahead and issue a warning out all the way into Marshall County because of what this storm has done so far tonight. It's in a very favorable atmosphere. Again, this storm right here, severe storm. Again, we don't want to forget about you in Stoddard County, New Madrid County. This is going to be headed into Mississippi County. Not a lot of uh, rotation with this, but as it moved through the Poplar Bluff area, this storm produced a 54 mile per hour wind gust <clears throat> at the airport in Poplar Bluff. And, and we've got, and that, yeah, go ahead. That, I'm just letting you know, giving you a, a little bit of a breather for a minute. Yeah, that's thanks. Severe thunderstorm <laughs> warning. Uh, get some water. I at least have a track on that. We are expected to see that move into Sykeston at about 919. That severe thunderstorm warning is going to move towards East Prairie at 934, towards Cairo at 947. So definitely not forgetting about you heading into some of these areas of Standard County and portions of New Madrid County and Scott County. But this is at least not tornado warned, but severe thunderstorm warned with 
60 mile per hour wind gusts possible. Definitely seeing a lot of lightning within this and heavy rain. So this will continue on that track north of the area where we're tracking that dangerous tornado. So that's again going to be pushing into areas of Mississippi County as well and northern portions of Kentucky, uh, particularly Ballard, Ballard and Carlisle County as we're heading into the next hour. That's when a lot of that will start to reach portions of Kentucky. So uh, what we're also noticing is those storms that are just to the south of us. We've been watching that for maybe the potential of those making their way into the heartland. There's a confirmed tornado on the ground near Harrisburg, but that's looking to stay to the south of us. So it's possible that some of those stronger storms might just clip us, but I really think that this is going to stay to the south of the heartland right now, which will be good news for us. We definitely do not need more tornadoes to be pushing into some of these southern areas that have already dealt with damage overnight. That big story, uh, that's going to be the tornado that we are tracking again in Kentucky. Yeah, it, it has hit a cafe. It's hit a fire department. It looks like in Casey, uh, it, that is near Clinton. Um, also, the storm is producing golf ball size hail. I mean, it's such a <clears throat> defined hook. I mean, this really is textbook of what it looks like, but to get these this time of year, that means that we could have very uh, dangerous, dangerous tornadoes produced, especially with this event that we're watching. I'm going to see if I can switch it over. We still again, as Grant has been tracking, we can still see that couplet is very strong winds are making their way, uh, especially on areas of Highway 51, where that's going to intersect portions. Let's see if I can get some towns on here just to the north of Crutchfield. So that's really where that rotation is right now. If you are north of Crutchfield, please again take shelter. We're also getting a new scan in, so that's moving off to the northwest. Areas that this is looking to maybe just pass is Wingo. This center rotation will move north of Wingo, but is looking to get close to Dublin. So if you're in Dublin, Kentucky, you'll certainly want to prepare for taking shelter. This will be moving into your location very shortly past Dublin. That's going to make its way almost a direct hit over Mayfield in Graves County. Grant showing that debris detection right now because we still got it on the ground right there. Still got it on the ground, so that could be again impacting or hitting any kind of structural structures and causing that to at least be lofted into the air. So that's really a good indication for us to see that, hey, there is a tornado on the ground more than likely, and that's something we're going to have to continue to watch as this storm still is holding on to a lot of strength in a very favorable environment. Thankfully, again, this is the only storm we're watching, but the bad side about it, there's been reports of damage. There's been reports of people trapped. Not great, so please take this seriously, especially as the system's continuing to stay with us as we're heading into the evening hours. So uh, I'm going to look at reports really fast. A lot of people are saying that they've at least um, reported the tornado. They've seen it. Grant mentioned that there is damage to a hardware store. Um, and as this continues to move in through some of these towns, more than likely there could be more damage along the way. We won't really fully be able to assess the full strength of this tornado until we have surveyors head out as we head into tomorrow, especially when we get more daylight. But I really don't think that this is going to die down anytime soon. Grant mentioned that's been extended into areas of Graves County, Marshall County, and we're going to have to watch that as it continues to track through, especially with these really strong winds. And as I've been tracking this, some of these winds are at least up close to or, or above 100 miles an hour. So really intense winds with this. Plan on at least probably seeing some trees uprooted more than likely. Um, we've had at least in the past with this system, there's been some power poles knocked down. Uh, don't go outside and try to see this. There's a lot of lightning within that system and that can also keep it very, very dangerous if you're going to be heading out during the evening hours. Um, what Grant's kind of looking at is we're watching more storms off to our west. That cold front still well outside of the heartland, which means there could be still more severe weather on the way as we continue through the evening hours and even heading into the early morning hours of tomorrow. We talked about how this system, again, not going to be exactly the easiest to deal with because it's at nighttime and when you might be sleeping, but not just the nighttime. We're talking about a long lived event of some strong to severe weather making its way in. So uh, Grant still focusing in on that main storm right still now. Got a significant debris ball. Right you can there. still see that hook. And that's <clears throat> really where we're focusing on where that tornado would form. That's the tornado right there. So Highway 307. This is east of Clinton. 
Highway 307, you need to be in your basement right now. You got 30 seconds to a minute before this crosses 307. That's the tornado. It is on the ground. It is doing damage. Uh, it has caused significant damage already. It is moving into the eastern parts of Hickman County right now, and then it's going to be crossing into uh, Graves County here real shortly. As you see 58 that goes into Graves County, this circulation will likely stay just and I mean just to the west of Wingo, but it's going to be close. And we've definitely have a tornado right there. We'll take a look at the shear <clears throat> right over that little purple dot. There's the tornado, and then we'll take a look to see about the debris. Definite, wow, that is a significant debris signature. Again, I don't know how many times I've said that tonight. It has hit something, and there's the debris right there. The debris continues to move across the area, and uh, I'm going to do something here a little different real quick. I'm going to leave this up. That's the tornado. It's crossing 307. I want to check another source real quick. I just want to see uh, what the debris, how high this debris is getting. And uh, I can do that by looking at another source that we have here. And uh, again, this, this tornado is in eastern um, Hickman County right now. And uh, let's see if I can see what the debris signature is showing. I'm just trying to see if I can find it on here um, real quick. So I need to do, again, this is a dangerous tornado that we are tracking right now. That debris ball is moving towards the uh, Hickman County, Graves County line as we speak. Okay, I found the debris signature on here. So I'm gonna cross, I just wanna get an idea of, uh, looks like we could be seeing yeah, wow, almost 20,000 feet in the atmosphere. So we have debris being lofted 20,000 feet in the air right now, Lisa. So this is a That's crazy. this is a significant tornado. So there is debris that is 20,000 feet high. So this tornado is taking stuff from the ground and lofting it to 20,000 feet. That is it right there. It is crossing 307 right now. It's going to be headed into uh, Highway 58 here very, very shortly. Again, this is a dangerous tornado. It is in eastern Hickman County right now. Eastern Hickman County about to move into Graves County. So what do we have going on in the heartland right now? We have one storm that has been producing tornadoes for about 150 miles now uh, and has produced a significant amount of damage. We have another storm that is severe right here, moving into the Sykeson area. You can see, I think we've got the Sykeson and we've got the, uh, the Cape Girardeau tower cam behind me there. And the Sykeson camera, this storm is moving into Sykeson right now. You can see there's an awful lot of lightning with it. But when I look at the winds, I don't see any tornado. We're not getting a tornado with this. We are gonna get some strong gusty winds out of this line that's moving in. And the strongest winds are located right in this general area in New Madrid County, the way it looks right now on the leading edge. You can see a gust front right here. Uh, Cape Girardeau, we're doing okay. Jackson, we're doing okay. Perryville, we're doing okay. Again, most of this activity, we, we've been void of the activity because that cap has really, really helped us out. What we're gonna be concerned with is this storm right here that is about to move into Reynolds County because this storm has produced a couple of tornadoes in the Springfield area. And right now it's just a severe storm, but it's gonna be headed into Reynolds County here shortly. And based on its current movement, it would likely go into Reynolds County, Northern Wayne County, Southern Madison County, Northern Bullinger County, and Northern Cape Girardeau County. And uh, again, the atmosphere is very conducive for tornadoes to develop if these storms can maintain their height and their severity so they have to overcome that layer of warm air, which seems to be saving a lot of us right here, thankfully. But you can see a lot of activity just blowing up from southern Illinois all the way down into the boot heel. But thankfully, all this activity is very, what we call kind of noisy. There's not a lot of cellular activity, and you need to see that cell so it can wrap up and become a tornado. And so far, we are not seeing that in any of this activity, except right here, the storm that is moving into Graves County, uh, a significant tornado. It looks like there's a pretty good tornado south and east of Jonesboro as well. I don't know if that has a purple shading to it. Yeah, it does. So there's a confirmed tornado with this right here as well. Uh, we'll have to watch that because that projection would take it into Weekly County and maybe extreme Southern Callaway County if it holds together. <clears throat> so our tornado right now moving into Graves County. Again, this, is, this has done significant damage. We still have a debris signature right there about to cross Highway 58 right now. 
That's the debris. You see that hook, you see the debris. Let me pan it up here just a bit. There it is, that is the tornado right there. The tornado is moving towards uh, State Route 339 West. Again, this tornado is gonna stay just to the northwest of Wingo, but it's gonna be close. Wingo, go ahead and get in your safe spot. If you're in extreme eastern Graves County, I hope you're in your basement. We've been talking about you for quite some time. This tornado is about to cross Highway 58, and then it's going to be headed up towards and parallel Highway 45, which turns into Interstate, I think, 69 now that goes into Mayfield, Kentucky. So if this holds together, this could be a serious situation because I know we have a lot of, uh, you know, Mayfield is one of our uh, bigger uh, populated areas. And uh, we all know what happened there a few years ago. We had that EF3 that went right through the center of Mayfield. And uh, we've got another one right here. So tornado warning has just been issued. Let's see where this tornado warning is for. And uh, it is a new uh, tornado. It is the, um, the storm that is in the Jonesboro area. And it clips, let's see, uh, Pemiscott County in Dunkling County. You can see here it is. Now they didn't do, they, they did away with the purple. They just, right now they're going with, um, with uh, a radar indicated tornado, but earlier it did touch down. But right now we've got a serious situation as a damaging large tornado is on the ground, moving into Graves County now. Very, very tight, tight circulation. Strong, tight circulation and very, very significant debris signature as well. So <clears throat> yes, we have a, significant tornado on the ground and it is moving towards Mayfield, Kentucky. So for you folks in Mayfield, Kentucky, please start getting in your basement, your safe spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pan things out just a bit to the west and I'm going to put a track on this as it goes into Mayfield just so we can get an idea of how long it's going to take for this tornado to get into Mayfield, Kentucky. This is just the tornado. So based on its current speed, Basically, in about 10 minutes, it's going to be entering the southwest side of Mayfield, and it could be going right through the center of town in 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> so, 928, this tornado that has done significant damage looks to be moving through the Mayfield, Kentucky area. So, Mayfield, if you're anywhere around Mayfield, please get in your basement if you have it. If you don't have a basement, again, get to the lowest level on you, of your home put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. It's continuing to wrap up. We still have a significant, significant debris signature with this storm as it's headed towards Mayfield, Kentucky. I'm gonna pan out because I do wanna take a look at that storm that is gonna be headed towards Southern Pemiscot County. I got a couple tracks on that if, if you yeah, want me to take, show them. Yeah, take um, Lisa on this for the, for the tracks on those uh, that's going into Pemiscot County because we have some folks that are probably yeah. doing some rescue right now. Yeah, and something that we're going to focus on, there's a couple areas of focus. I really just want to show you first how I like to say electrifying these storms are. A lot of lightning. Again, that's just going to show you that these storms are at least growing in the atmosphere. We've had some of these at least near 40,000 feet and not only dealing with the potential of having to rescue people in some of these storms, but the lightning will pose another threat even if the severe weather is not in your area. That severe thunderstorm warning is getting very close to areas of Reynolds County. Uh, we're putting a track on that because it would impact areas of Reynolds County heading into southern portions of Iron County, Madison County, northern portions of Wayne County within the next half an hour. So if you're in those locations, plan on dealing with possibly 60 mile per hour winds. I don't think we're going to extend right now that severe thunderstorm warning, but it is south of Sykeston moving into northern portions of New Madrid County. There will still be some gusty winds with this and a lot of lightning and then we're focusing on that southern storm that really is the one of interest that had that confirmed tornado uh, right now that could clip the southern portion of Pemiscott County near Cooter at about 1003. So this will be the next storm of interest other than the tornado that we're watching now moving into Kentucky. We'll have to watch the rotation within this confirmed tornado very closely uh, as that also could be moving into our southern counties and then carry on into areas of Tennessee and possibly Kentucky if it continues on that northeasterly track. Yeah, <clears throat> again, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about this because we've got some folks that are trying to uh, rescue folks that are trapped in houses. Again, this is another storm. There's the tornado right there. I think that tornado will go just south of the damage path earlier, but it's close. It's close. So all you folks 
the sheriff's departments, the emergency management, the fire rescue that are helping folks in southern Dunkling County, in southern Pemiscot County, there's another possible tornado headed that way and it'll be there in about 15 minutes or so. We did just get a new severe thunderstorm warning, so let me see where our new warning is located. And it is for uh, Cape Girardeau County, southeastern Cape Girardeau County. It's also for uh, uh, parts of uh, Scott County and into Alexander County and Union County. And uh, looks like Pulaski County is for the storm that is to the north of Sykeston. Uh, they just clipped Cape Girardeau County. I, I don't think uh, the severe weather is going to be hitting Cape Girardeau. Uh, it looks like it's just off to the east. You can see all the lightning on our tower cam there in Cape Girardeau County. So that is uh, our new warning. Again, we're not seeing anything that looks like a tornado in that. So we're going to be focusing right now on the storms that have the potential to uh, cause serious damage and loss of life, unfortunately. And that's this storm that is moving into towards the Mayfield, Kentucky area. I really hope this tries to cycle again before it moves into Mayfield. Um, because, you know, it, 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 oh, there's the debris. It is on the ground still. It is racing off to the north and east. Mayfield, you need to be seeking shelter right now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. A lot of times I can show the velocity. I don't have to right now. That's the tornado. You see that purple circle? That's the tornado. It's going to parallel uh, Interstate 69 uh, that goes into Mayfield, and it's booking off to the northeast. Look at it. It's wrapped up even more. A bigger debris signature. This is moving into Mayfield, Kentucky right now. Folks in Mayfield, Kentucky, please, please seek shelter. This storm has caused significant damage already. There is a significant tornado on the ground right now that is moving into Mayfield, Kentucky as we speak. Uh, we'll take a look at the debris signature. I'm sure I'm not going to like what I see, and I don't. That is a significant debris signature. It matches up per perfect with that purple. And something else, watch this. That's the tornado right there, right there. This is extreme inflow right here. So we've got a lot of inflow being wrapped around right into this inflow notch. So not only are we seeing a tornado, we're probably seeing 80 mile per hour winds out ahead of it wrapping around that can cause damage as well, well out ahead of this tornado. And even to the south of the tornado, we could see a lot of power outages and such. But this is the tornado moving right along Highway 45 and Interstate 69. It's moving right into Mayfield, Kentucky as we speak. Again, for you folks in Alexander County and Union County and uh, Pulaski County, we're not forgetting about you. Scott County, not forgetting about you. Yes, you have a severe thunderstorm warning, but you don't have anything like this. This has the potential to kill people. The storm is moving into uh, Alexander County right now, probably 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. Just stay indoors till the storm passes. Mayfield, I need you in your safe spot. That is a serious tornado that has caused already significant damage as it moves off to the north and to the east. And then you got to worry about if it holds together, uh, Benton, Kentucky. You know, that's uh, the National Weather Service in uh, Paducah. Great job, folks. Uh, if you're watching me, putting that warning out well in advance. I, I like that because it brings a heightened awareness. What's the worst thing that can happen? Well, the worst thing that can happen, it goes through and people get hurt. Best case scenario, it dies down and people complain that they had a warning. You know, that, that, that's what we want. We want this thing to die down and people hear, well, why did we have a tornado warning? We didn't get a tornado. Folks, it's better to be safe and sorry in a situation like this. This tornado has caused fatalities in Arkansas, a significant amount of injury and damage probably in Southern Dunkling County and uh, parts of Pemiscot County. I'm not sure about the number of injuries. We do know there's people trapped in houses. We know that the a fire station was hit in Tennessee. We know that a cafe and a fire station was hit near Clinton in Kentucky. Uh, so this has caused a tremendous amount of damage over the past few hours as we've been watching it. And again, we have that new tornado warning we talked about that is clipping uh, parts of Southern Dunklin County and Southern Pemiscot County. And we continue to watch this storm as well. Uh, this storm appears to be weakening uh, as we continue to track it off, I'm going to see if we get, it's still pretty decent and we'll have to watch and see what happens with this part of the line near West Plains. But so far, this activity has really struggled to, uh, to be considered anything serious. Now we do have another tornado warning and I think they just uh, updated the tornado warning for, wow, look at that debris ball. It's right over Interstate 69. It's moving into the southeastern side of Mayfield, Kentucky. This is a dangerous situation. 
we have a significant tornado moving into Mayfield, Kentucky right now. Another severe thunderstorm warning. They continued the Sykeson storm into uh, parts of Mississippi County and extreme northern to Madrid County. Seeing a little weak rotation with it, but not seeing anything that would be overly concerning right now. So let's back out, take a look at the entire area. Here's our our tornado and I, what did they do? A tornado emergency is what I'm I, I'm assuming. Uh, Lisa, is that what they did? Because it's a very tiny. It just encompasses Mayfield. I'm assuming they have a tornado emergency out for Mayfield, Kentucky. Yeah, what they're just saying right now about it is that there's an observed large and confirmed tornado over Mayfield moving northeast at about 60 miles an hour. So um, I haven't seen anything else yet regarding that. Uh, definitely not a great area because that's a very populated area. So we're watching that closely. One of the other locations we're still going to monitor is again, we're not forgetting about other areas of the heartland, especially as this line is moving through. We're dealing with at least a severe thunderstorm warning just outside of the heartland near Red Reynolds County and really not looking too impressive, at least on seeing a lot of rotation within that, but there will be some stronger winds. Um, the bigger story that we're watching as we're moving closer to Cape Girardeau, this is going to be heading into Alexander County and portions of Southern Illinois. There is a severe thunderstorm warning issued for that where we could be dealing with penny sized hail and up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That's going to move into mounds at about 932 and heading towards Joppa at about 952. So that's one of the warnings that we've been issued. We also, as I zoomed down, zoomed down a little bit, had a new severe thunderstorm warning issued, and this is going to continue over areas of Mississippi County and portion, right. northern portions of New Madrid County. All right, I want to get back to Mayfield because Mayfield is about to take a direct hit from a very large and damaging tornado. So for you folks in Mayfield, like we've been talking about you for quite some time, this tornado is moving into Mayfield right now. This is a debris ball. It is on the ground. It is causing significant damage right now. Significant damage. You can see this circle right here. It is moving into the southwestern side of town. Um, this little small warning that the National Weather Service put out, they did that to mention catastrophic damage. Haven't seen catastrophic damage since we had the Perryville warning after it hit Perryville. This is going right into downtown Mayfield, Kentucky. This is a significant life threatening situation right now for you folks in Mayfield. Please get in your safe spot. We've been mentioning Mayfield for quite some time and hopefully you've been uh, talking and listening to us. It has moved through Mayfield now. It is moving into the northeastern parts of Mayfield. The tornado is moving uh, through the northeastern parts of Mayfield, Kentucky. You can see that uh, dot right there and uh, folks in the newsroom. Let me know if you guys start hearing any damage. I'm, I can't imagine we're not going to get lots of reports of damage from this system. It moved right through Mayfield, the center part of Mayfield, Kentucky. Uh, this is a significant tornado. It's so noisy that the, the actual reflectivity is very, very tough. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, debris signature to see. Um, I'm almost scared to look at it. Uh, it's not honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but it's there. It's pretty bad. It hit something significant. So we have a tornado on the ground. It just moved through the Mayfield, Kentucky area. It's moving out of Mayfield. Now it's moving back towards uh, Interstate 69. You can see uh, Highway 131 here. I'm not sure which highway this is. Let me go ahead and check to see what's going on. It's heading if you're at least at some point wanting to look oak level, you're going to be the next area where this is going to be highway making 58. your way. So anywhere along Highway 58 coming out of Mayfield, Kentucky, this tornado is on the ground and it is doing damage as we speak. This is a significant tornado. Uh, I, I hope everybody in Mayfield was taking shelter. It went right through the town. Lisa, this is uh, this is very, very dangerous. What we just witnessed um, a significant tornado going right through the center of Mayfield, Kentucky, as we speak. Now, yeah. this tornado is going to continue off to the north and to the east if it holds together. Benton would be Benton, one of the, the next, next locations. Yeah. And right now it's estimated to reach Benton at about 949. So 931, that gives you about 
10 minutes to maybe get in your safe spot, maybe 15 before that enters your town. Um, again, other areas, Oak Level will be prior to that fair dealing. This could be making it to you by 956. And then Princeton, which we had that tornado warning in that oh, county yeah. a little bit earlier, that's going to be on our far eastern counties by 1025. So by the looks of this, this has been on the ground for a long time. It probably will still stay on the ground. A very defined hook echo there. Unfortunately, yes, a direct hit looking to be over Mayfield and now this is going to be making its way towards Benton. So Oak Level Benton, wow. please get in your safe spot. Get in your basement, your most interior room. If you do not have a basement, get away from the windows and any kind of glass. Take shelter. A confirmed tornado has been on the ground and has been continuing is. to be on the ground. That looks to be just south of what road is that? Uh, uh, this is Interstate 69 right here that comes from Benton down to Mayfield. This is Interstate 69. It is paralleling Interstate 60 excuse me, paralleling Interstate 69 right now. And I think that other road is 58. Yeah, it is 58. So Kentucky Highway 58, this tornado is just paralleling. It's going right between Interstate 69 and Highway 58. And that's it, folks. Again, it has moved through the Mayfield, Kentucky area. I am scared to hear what I'm, I'm hoping that it was weak, but it doesn't look weak on radar and it went right through the center of Mayfield, Kentucky. So I'm hoping everybody heeded the warning. We've been talking about Mayfield for quite some time. We gave you a first alert about probably close to an hour before it even got there because we saw what it was doing in Lake County. And uh, now it has moved out of Mayfield, Kentucky. It is still on the ground near Cherry Drive right now, south of uh, Highway, again, Interstate 69. It's near the exit of Interstate 69 and Highway 131. This tornado continues to move off to the northeast at about 55 to 60 miles per hour. It's going to parallel. It's probably going to cross highway or interstate 69 just off to uh, just right in this general area right here. So if we kind of continue this off to the north and east, I want to zoom in to see if I can get some of these other roads that are that are just out ahead of it. Again, I'm zooming away from the tornado to give you folks for your first alert of this storm coming in. So Highway 301, uh, McKendree Church Road, uh, Stone Road, uh, we're seeing, um, I think that's hash. It's hard for me to read that lane right there uh, because it's backwards for me. And Crowder Road, this storm is moving, the tornado is moving into Crowder Road right now. You can see the tornado is moving <clears throat> across Interstate 69 as we speak. It's more than likely right over Crowder Road. Again, we get this, it's about um, 90 seconds from when it actually happened and the speed that this is moving, the tornado is gonna be in Crowder Road right now. So let's follow this up to the north and east. So Trace Creek Church Road, Trace Creek Church Road. If you live near that, get in your safe spot, please, right now. That's putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. If you have a that would be the best place to go. Again, we have a significant tornado on the ground it has done a lot of damage. Uh, we still haven't heard any reports of the Mayfield area, but I, I, I can't imagine we don't have a lot of damage in Mayfield, Kentucky right now, as this went right through the center of town. Now, <clears throat> it's continuing to move off to the north and east. You can see that it is moving into um, here Marshall County very, very shortly. So for you folks in Benton, you are next. If this holds together, the next big populated area would be Benton, Kentucky. It may go just to the north uh, of this uh, of Benton. It's going to be close. Boy, it just continues to wrap up. That thing is on the ground and it is doing significant damage. Again, a tremendous. In addition to the wind and the tornado, we're seeing golf ball size hail in this area of the storm. And that is the tornado right there. We could take a look at the winds inside it, get an update. It's so noisy because it's so strong. I, I, I mean, it's it, it really concerns me about how strong this tornado is that is moving through parts of Western Kentucky right now. We'll put the scope on and take a look at, uh, at the shear marker on it. And there it is. We got that tornado. Again, we do have a uh, significant debris signature as well. So folks just tuning in, Mayfield, Kentucky just got a pretty significant hit from a substantial tornado. That tornado warning continues to go. Benton, you are next. Again, we have a tornado that is headed possibly southern Dunkling County and southern Pemiscot County. I want to emphasize that because we have people doing rescue work out there. We have people trapped in structures and we have another line of storms moving in.
The cold front still out to the west. We've got another line of storms developing, and this one is this is starting to get a little more active. So I think this is going to be our next round of severe weather that will be hitting later tonight. But it's unbelievable what has happened with this storm. We were tracking this in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and now it is moving towards Benton, Kentucky, continuing to cause havoc, continuing to cause damage. It looked like it cycled maybe once or twice where the tornado lifted and a new one developed. But right now, this is not in the, does not appear to be cycling at all. We just have a significant tornado right there on the ground. Uh, again, this is in Graves County. It is moved off to the northeast of Mayfield. So Mayfield, uh, the tornado has moved out of your area. You've got some storms that are moving in. We still have a debris signature right here. You can see that very clearly. It's just to the east side of Highway 301. It's paralleling Interstate 69, headed towards the western side of Benton, Kentucky. Benton, Kentucky, you definitely need to be in your safe spot right now. Get underground if you have a basement. That'd be the best place to be. If you don't, get on the lowest floor of your house. Get to that center room. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. I mentioned earlier, if you have a, 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 a baseball helmet, a, a bicycle helmet that you wear, put that on when you take shelter. Any added protection you can get will help out. There is the tornado right there. And we're going to scope it real quick and see what the, uh, the winds inside it look like. We're going to put it right over the tornado. There's the tornado. Now we're going to see if the debris signature is still there. I would think it would be. Yes, we do have that debris signature right there. So, and still very intense intense inflow into this storm. So this storm is, is not going to weaken anytime soon. The tornado may dissipate, but a new one will likely form. This storm is just ingesting all the warm, moist air to the south and east. There is nothing to impede it from its demise. It will continue to move off to the north and east. What we look for our storms and showers off to the southeast. See the winds flowing into this storm. We do not see anything out here. So all the heat and humidity is being fed into this storm. And it's been that way the entire path. So a significant tornado is about to cross into Marshall County and head towards the Benton, Kentucky area. The main part of the tornado should stay just north of Fairdaling, but it could go over the northern parts of Fairdaling. And then this warning will likely have to be extended for the rest of Marshall County and then parts of Lyon County, the land between the lakes. This tornado is headed that way. And like Lisa was saying earlier, it is headed towards the Princeton area. So Princeton, you've got about an hour or so maybe. Let me go ahead and put a, we're going to go ahead and put a track on this tornado because uh, we need to make sure that everybody in harm's way uh, stays safe and has ample warning. Uh, let me try that again. The tracker didn't want to work for me so here we go it's still not working I think I hit the wrong one let me do this I think I did yeah let me hit the line track that's what I wanted so let's put the tornado right there and let's put it off to the north and to the east and I'm gonna put an hour long okay so this storm will be out of our viewing area in about an hour um, so that's definitely some good news so let's put another track on it and uh, we're going off to the north and to the east and uh, so we're going to go to about an hour here. And there's the areas that will be hit by it. So just as we're talking about, they've extended the warning all the way to Lyon County, uh, as we talked about, and moving in towards the Princeton area eventually. You can see that Princeton at 1018, it's 940 right now. You have 38 minutes. This tornado... It may weaken before getting there, but I, the storm's not going to weaken. So like it did in Tennessee, as it moved into Hickman County, the tornado dissipated and a new tornado formed. I think that's happen, gonna, that, that could happen again, but right now it's not in any hurry of cycling. It is really wrapped up. It is an intense tornado, and it is moving towards the Benton, Kentucky area right now. And the warning has been extended into Lyon County. It's going to go to the land between the lakes, and eventually it's going to go into... Uh, uh, Caldwell County and uh, 
hit the Princeton area. Lisa, you got any information so, on this storm? Um, pretty much what we're still tracking, again, that large confirmed dangerous tornado. It was near Benton, and it's moving northeast still at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that's what I tracked it. That's, what we're, that's what we're tracking it as. Benton is going to be under the gun. We're also going to be tracking towns, again, continuing uh, close to Grand Rivers. That might be a little bit north of that rotation, but this really is the main story that we are watching as we're continuing through the night. We're still going to be watching again the boot heel, especially near Pemiscott County. That's where at least that will clip that tornado warning that's issued there. We're still again carrying on a severe thunderstorm warning in portions of Mississippi County where you could be seeing at least penny size hail and some 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And then there's another severe thunderstorm warning, so we're not still forgetting about you in southern Illinois. That's going to be in areas of Union, Alexander, Pulaski counties, and that it still could have uh, up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts and some small hail as well. So there looks to be a break right now in some areas of southern Illinois stretching in the southeast Missouri, but that secondary line is moving in behind it. And again, that's what we're going to focus that new line forming still into a very favorable atmosphere. So zooming in really quickly, I'll give you a, a path unless Grant wants to get back. Yeah, I just to want to here. Here is the yeah, I just want to. I definitely I think what we should do is you leave the radar. Let's put the three boxes back up if we can. And uh, if you get any information on anything, let me know. I want you focusing on the storms that are in Dunk, moving into Dunkley and Pemiscott County so they can see that on the radar. We can have both storms on right now so we can track both of these storms. I'm going to focus on this because this is the most dangerous storm, but we don't want to forget about Pemiscott County and Dunkley County because we do know there's rescue attempts going on down there and uh, we want the viewers to be able to see that it looks as though that uh, tornado may stay just south of there too but this is definitely on the ground it's crossing interstate 69 right now again you can see that purple little blob right there just a perfect circle the inflow wrapping around very tightly and this is going to be headed right into the benton kentucky area so benton kentucky you need to be seeking shelter right now. We've been talking about you for quite some time, but uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because this is going to go just, it looks like, on the north side of Benton. So the center of Benton, it's going to be a close call, but I'm thinking the tornado itself is going to go near the intersection of Highway 348 and 69 on the northwest side of uh, Benton. You can see Jackson School Road, uh, Ivy Road here. These areas the tornado will likely impact. I definitely want you in your safe spot right now. Locust Street as well, a good chance of seeing a tornado. This is a large damaging tornado that has been on the ground for quite some time and it is located right here and it is moving off to the north and to the east at 60 miles per hour. Again, this storm we started tracking in Jonesboro, Arkansas with damage and it is still producing significant damage as it moves off to the north and east. Again, this is a very large and damaging, possibly violent tornado. We won't know how strong this is until the Weather Service goes out and does a survey. <clears throat> we won't know how many we had, but I'm thinking there's been at least three tornadoes with this storm. All three of them, what we would consider long track tornadoes, well over 20 miles in length. Uh, this one touched down. Um, there's the tornado catastrophic damage, I'm sure is what they're saying for Benton, Kentucky. I'm hey, going to walk hey, away. Leave that, yeah, leave that shot up. They're saying that they, they've labeled it catastrophic again. They is. Just like they yep. did with, um, just like they did with uh, Mayfield. So <clears throat> Benton, Kentucky, you're under the gun. This tornado is significant. It is large. It has caused a significant amount of damage. So folks in Benton, Kentucky, please take this warning seriously. I hope you can tell by the tone of my voice that we don't want to fool with this. This is a serious, serious danger. Now, if there is any good news with this tornado, the south side of Benton, hopefully, unless this turns to the right, will be missed. I think that, again, like I said, the bullseye is going to be right near 348 and Interstate 69, and there, there, I'm sure there is a lot of of structures there. This is a big area where people go to the lake. I'm sure there's gas stations, fast food joints, uh, uh, grocery stores. This tornado is headed there right now. That is headed there right now. It'll be there in about five minutes. Let's go ahead and, and I'll put a quick little line track on it. 
real quick. And here we go. So yeah, look at that, five minutes, five minutes. So less than five minutes, this tornado is gonna be on the doing damage in the Benton, Kentucky area. So again, a very, very dangerous situation coming up there. And I can see from the, um, from the other image that I'm looking at down here, thank you, Lisa, I can keep my eye on those other storms. There's a weak, small rotation right on the Dunkling, Pemiscot County line with Mississippi County and Arkansas. Doesn't look all that impressive. There's a little kink that is moving towards Blyville right now that may clip the southeastern parts of, um, of Pemiscot County, but it's nothing like we're seeing here. This is the tornado that went through that same area earlier, and now it is coming into the Benton, Kentucky area. Again, based on the current speed, we will be done with this storm in an hour, thankfully. Okay, here it is. It is moving right where we said, right near the intersection of 348 and 69. That's the latest update. So here's the tornado at the radar. It's more than likely right here at this moment. It's more than likely just off to the east because of how fast this storm is moving. So I'm gonna back things up. We're gonna zoom uh, into a couple of areas out ahead of this rotation or this tornado that is on the ground that could cause significant damage. And we have it wrapping up tremendously. That's the tornado, large hail, strong winds. Yes, I'm focusing on the most dangerous part right now. The part that has the chance of unfortunately causing the loss of life. This is a extremely dangerous situation on the north side of Benton, Kentucky right now, as it continues to move off to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. Again, we're gonna zoom in to this area out here, just out ahead of it so we can get some roads to pop up. Again, this is Highway or Interstate 69. You can see Highway 641. Um, you can see some of these roads, old 641 road, uh, Faust Sled Road. I can't, it's hard for me to make some of these out. Looks like Decker Road, all these areas, you need to be in your safe spot. This is a damaging tornado that is headed your way right now. Uh, I'll back up just a minute because I want to see how close we are to the lake. I know we have a lot of folks that, that uh, you may not live there right now, but you may have a lake house or, or, or know somebody with a lake house, somebody that may be at the lake. This is going to be headed towards Kentucky Lake. Matter of fact, I have some friends that have a place right here. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, Diane. Uh, this is headed right there. Uh, I hope you all aren't there right now. Hopefully you're watching me. Uh, it is headed right into that general area. Uh, there's the tornado and it's going to be headed towards Kentucky Lake. And we know there's a lot of houses right along the lake right there. And there's probably a lot of folks that, that live there year round. So uh, if you live along the northern edge of Kentucky Lake, sort of close to the dam and uh, or even Lake Barkley, the northern end, you need to be seeking shelter. This is headed your way right now. A very strong and intense tornado that is moving into uh, parts of Kentucky, moving through parts of Kentucky. Uh, another continuation of this severe thunderstorm warning moving into the Paducah area. Again, we're not seeing anything that looks tornadic with this, just some gusty winds and some small hail. Uh, usually we would focus a lot on this as well, but as you can tell, we have a very dangerous situation that is in Kentucky right now. So we're gonna be focusing on this. And uh, it looks like that uh, tornado moving towards Southern Dunkling County. Lisa, have you heard anything else about the tornado in the Dunkling County area? No, not go ahead yet. And yeah, go, I just, I'm talking to the booth too. Go ahead and leave all three frames up for us, but while Lisa talks. Yeah, so not yet, but we are watching at least two areas where this thunderstorm had a couple of kinks in the line, which Grant, Grant mentioned. One of those is just south of Blyville. The other one is further south uh, near Victoria. The one further south has better rotation on it, but we're still going to watch that area just south of Blyville that has some rotation that's mild within that thunderstorm as it continues to move further closer to southern portions of Pamascot County. If that continues again, that could move closer to areas near Cooter, and then we're going to continue to watch that move just south of our counties but into Tennessee. So again, no uh, official confirmed tornadoes with those yet, but there are tornado warnings on those at least for about another five to ten minutes. So we'll 
continue to track that as those again look to impact some of our southern counties. Again, Grant Mansion, those locations uh, did have at least a hit from this exact same tornado yeah. that Grant has on screen right now. There's been structural damage reported there. People who are trapped, so crews trying to get in to help people and help figure out if anyone else needs assistance. So please, if you are in those locations in the boot heel, do not be driving around. Emergency crews are going to be trying to get through over uh. the next couple of hours. So. I think this is the road that my friend's house is on too, Little Bear Highway. I know there's a lot of lake houses in this area. A lot of people go visit. There's folks that live there. There's a marina that's located right here. Uh, this tornado is headed right there, folks. This, this, uh, this is Kentucky Lake right here. Uh, this is one of the little sloughs, little inlets that comes in off the lake. Um, and we can pan back to the west. Little, uh, what is that, Little Bear Highway. Uh, I want you to be in your safe spot. If you're in any of those housing areas, some condos that are on the lake, you definitely need to be in your safe spot. Again, the tornado is still a decent way away, but it's moving so fast that it could be there in about 10 minutes or less. Um, here is uh, the tornado. And it looks like they issued another tornado warning uh, for, is it Pemiscot that, County, they, Lake yep, and Obion they, County? They just issued that for Pemiscot County. I think County it looked and, like uh, there was a, another little kink that was forming an extreme southern. Uh, put the velocity up, if you would, please, real quick. It looked like um, right at the southern edge of Pemiscot County, there was a little kink. It looks like it may have dissipated, but I think that may have been what they were, were looking at. It was to the southwest of Cooter when I yep. saw it, and I think that's kind of what they may have, may have done. The, the, but again, that is nothing compared to what we were seeing right here. That would be, there'd be a quick spin up. Lisa's got her eye on it. We're gonna leave that radar up too, so we make sure that we're covering you. But this tornado right here will easily destroy numerous structures and could cause loss of life. So we, got, we have to stay with this as it continues to move off to the north and to the east. We continue to see this debris ball. Again, I showed you this moving towards, the, look how fast it is moving. There's the tornado. It continues to move fast. We have that inflow notch. It continues to wrap around. It doesn't look like it's trying to cycle yet. Uh, what I would look for is for this kind of to dissipate in color and look for a new little kink to form on the south side. Right now, it looks like this is gonna continue off to the northeast. Again, we have numerous lake houses that are in danger right now. Folks that may be living along Kentucky Lake, this is headed your way. And uh, again, like I said, uh, Little Bear Highway, uh, this little slough right here, we have uh, a damaging tornado that is moving right there as we speak. And this has done a lot of damage. It's been on the ground for a long time. Is there any information not, in the chat room about Mayfield um, or Benton? I am not seeing anything right now other than the fact that I'm going to let you know, Grant, that uh, the Paducah office has lost power, so Springfield will okay. be taking over to give us some warnings and information. The one thing we are looking that's coming in right now uh, is that there is major damage reported in Mayfield, but no exact information on what that damage okay. may entail at this time. So that obviously will come out the further we head into the evening and especially the morning hours when we get daylight. The only thing I'm seeing right now is that there's about 65 mile per hour wind gusts still in Marshall County um, from their mesonet. So very strong winds with this. Okay. Yes. The, other than that, there is no other reports at the moment. All right. Yeah, I, I, you know, there has to have been just unfortunately significant damage in Mayfield. I'm sure there was significant damage on the north side of Benton, Kentucky. And I, I really hope this can, can dissipate. But right now we still see that tornado and it is headed right towards, I mean, I've, I've been here a few times. I know that there's a lot of folks that uh, live on the lake or they may have a, a lake house uh, or they have friends that have a lake house. I've gone the boat up and down this part of the lake and it's just full of houses, big houses that uh, unfortunately are about to get hit by a big tornado. There is the tornado right now. And, and again, this tornado is right here. It is moving so fast. Uh, let me put a track on it as we're zoomed in real close and we're gonna just put it on for like 10 minutes. And you can see the 10 minute track. So. It'll go through Marshall and then Twin Lakes as it moves right across this area. It is moving so fast at 60 miles per hour. It is such a tightly wound storm, uh, a very just a textbook tornado, unfortunately. And I, I, I really wish that this would, um, I just wish it would waken. I mean, this has been going on too long and this is just a dangerous situation. But of course, we're going to stay here with it and keep everybody who's in harm's way safe. Princeton, I'm talking to you. 
This thing, even if it dies down, I think a new tornado will form. This storm has been going nuts for three hours. This is the storm we were talking about. If you remember, we were zooming out towards the storm in Little Rock when we were covering the tornado in Graves County earlier this afternoon. This was the storm that was in Little Rock. And here it is moving towards Grand Rivers right now, moving across Kentucky Lake, about to cause significant damage to some areas out there. You can see a lot of lightning off to the east of Cape Girardeau and southeast on the tower cam there. Again, so far here in Cape Girardeau, we're doing all right. Most of southeast Missouri is doing all right as well. I'm going to zoom out and take a look at everything. Again, this is starting to fill in. So this could be the start of some more severe weather. So we'll have to watch that closely. Uh, again, we've seen damaging wind gusts with this line. Lisa was saying it knocked the power out in Paducah. And we're watching this line closely with tornado warnings moving into uh, Lake County, Tennessee, Obion County, Tennessee, and southeastern Pemiscot County. But our biggest concern, again, is located right here in uh, near just to the northeast of Benton, Kentucky now, about to move into Kentucky Lake, a significant uh, tornado that has caused significant damage along its path. And uh, here we go. It is moving across the lake right now. Again, the, the radar is showing the tornado is right here. This tornado is right here right now. This tornado is moving so fast that uh, when we get the update from the radar, it's just about a mile or two farther east. So the tornado is now probably over the lake right now. It's about to move into the land between the lakes and then head over towards Lake Barkley. This will be the uh, southern and western side of Lake Barkley. This will be the northern and eastern side of Lake Barkley. This tornado is going to be hitting the Lake Barkley area here very shortly after it comes on shore. Uh, in the land between the lakes there. The circulation will likely stay just south of the main city of uh, Grand Rivers, but it's close. So we're going to have to continue to watch that for you closely. Uh, let's take a look at the winds inside this. Again, just an extremely wrapped up storm. We're so close. I want to back up so we can kind of just get an idea uh, uh, of how amazing this storm is wrapped up. This is just really, really serious, folks. Just unfortunate how much wind we're seeing wrapping around a very, very intense rotation. Uh, this tornado is going to be probably be one for the record books around here for the length. Uh, I mean, I know we've had stronger tornadoes probably. I, I, I don't think this is going to be the strongest tornado we've ever seen, but it's going to be up there, folks. And um, it's going to be up there. This storm's going to be up there for the amount of length that it continued to move across the area. Uh, just wrapping up, you can see it right there across the lake. It is now moving uh, off the lake now, moving on land here briefly. And then it's about to cross Lake Barkley. Again, this is an intense tornado that is moving through the area. You can see it right here. Matter of fact, the, I, 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 I'm worried because I'm, I'm sure it hit some lake houses, so I'm worried what the debris signature looks like. Um, yeah, we've got the debris signature right there. It's moving right across the lake. And again, it's more than likely right here now. It has moved probably off the lake, and it is now in between the lakes. And then here's Lake Barkley, where it'll go across the uh, southern and western side of Lake Barkley, and it's going to continue to move off to the north and to the east. So let's, um, let's back things out just a bit. I'm going to give you just a quick update with uh, the tornado warning that we are watching in okay. portions of Pemiscot County, and that's going to be extended in the Lake County. There is slight rotation that I've been watching just south of Cooter, and that at least is going to be also just to the south of Steele. So if you're in those locations, please at least take shelter because we're not having a confirmed tornado, but there is rotation within these storms moving from northeastern portions of Arkansas into the boot heel and that within itself is at least going to cause a concern for a potential tornado that could be capable of being produced. So again, we are watching the boot heel for that. Right now, that tornado warning is extending in the northern northernmost portion into areas of Lake County and just clipping Obion County. No confirmed tornado on that, but we're watching at least a little bit of kinks within that line as it moves through. That big story, though, is going to be this confirmed tornado. I mean, I have to say probably at this point, when we tracked it last, it was at about 117 miles, so it's got to be well over that, probably close to, we'd say, 150 at this point. 
Moving into just southern portions of Grand Rivers as Grant's zooming in there a little bit. Um, and that's really where at least this hook echo has been very well defined. I'm kind of looking at a couple other tools over here. This is going to be making its way just south of Eddyville. So if you're in those area and it looks to possibly hit north and northwestern portions of Princeton. So very uh, at least some areas where Grant's mentioned people have homes. People live in these locations really you need to take shelter. This is a dangerous situation as this tornado continues to track its way on the ground and it's still moving off to the northeast at about 55 miles an hour, give or take. So Grant showing that debris signature. That's yeah, right there. And you again, can see it very well defined and obviously it's been hitting structures in order for it to really show some of that debris signature that we're showing on first floor Doppler network right now. So more than likely this tornado is now located right here. Again, it's moving very, very rapidly. Um, we're going to back things out just a bit. I will tell you that the reflectivity on the debris ball is a lot lower. With that said, it moved over a large area of the lake, so it probably just has water in it and it doesn't have a lot of debris. It probably dropped the debris in the lake. And so we'll see what happens as it continues to move off to the north and to the east now that it's back on land. But uh, there is still a debris signature with this system. So we have a tornado on the ground right now continuing to race off to the north and to the east. So I'm going to do another track on this. I'm going to back things out just a bit. And uh, again, we mentioned Princeton because uh, it's going to be headed that way here in just a little bit um, if it holds together, which, you know, we've said if it holds together all night and, and it's held together because uh, the way the atmosphere is set up. And this is just an unbelievable supercell that just continues to move off rapidly. Okay, I'm going to put an hour, I'm going to try and do an hour long track on here. Well, we're going to get about 55 minutes. So Princeton, 1020. So that's 18 minutes. That's how fast this thing is moving. 18 minutes in Princeton. It's going to be out of our area probably by 1030, 1035. And we can say goodbye to the storm and then worry about the other storms that are coming in. But again, we have a tornado on the ground now in Lyon County, land between the lakes. It's moving into Lake Barkley right now. And then it'll be moving towards Caldwell County, uh, towards the Princeton area. Another severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued. Uh, that is for the storm that is in southern uh, Reynolds County. It's going to be headed towards Iron County and then eventually move towards uh, Madison County. Possible tornado with this storm. That's what the, the dark lines mean. Again, this is the storm that produced a couple of tornadoes in the Springfield area, and it's now moving into our area. So we'll have to watch that closely as well. But our main concern, of course, is this unbelievable storm that has been going on for quite some time that is just uh, really wrapped up and uh, caused a tremendous amount of damage, unfortunately. And here it is. The tornado is located right here in the reflectivity. That's just what I was concerned with. Remember I said it didn't look all that impressive for a minute? Well, now it's bright purple again. That's because now it's hitting houses again. Um, it was going over water, so it didn't look as big. Uh, now it's hitting houses and trees and structures again. Uh, so we are seeing significant debris once again with our tornado that is uh, moving across Western Kentucky. And uh, there it is. Wow, it is moving. It is now more than likely over Lake Barkley or just skirting the shore, which is probably worse. Now, I'm not sure what is in that area. I don't know how many houses are in the land between the lakes. I know there's a state park. There's some stuff that goes on there. I'm going to zoom in and see if we, there are some roads there. So I'm sure we do have some houses that are about to get hit. So, uh, so Smith Cemetery Road right here. That's where the tornado is right now. That's where the tornado is going to be headed. So uh, you need to be in your safe spot if you live on Smith Cemetery Road. Uh, we'll pan things out to the other side of Lake Barkley. Well, it's going to be skirting right along the southern side here. And you can see all these roads that are popping up where there's likely some lake houses. And of course, you could see on the northern side, I know there's a lot of areas where there's houses in this area. And so this is going to be headed towards a uh, general area like Lake Barkley Drive. Uh, let me look at Gregory Road. I know you're seeing lots of lightning, hearing a lot of thunder, probably getting some hail, but the tornado is headed your way. So these folks, if you live along Lake Barkley, you need to be in your safe spot. The northern part of Lake Barkley, you need to be in your basement. For you folks on the western side, west of Kentucky Lake, 
The tornado's gone. The tornado's already moved out. There's still some heavy downpours going on, some hail more than likely, but the tornado is located right here and it continues to move across Lyon County and we'll be crossing Lake Barkley here very, very shortly. We still have the tornado warnings as well for uh, Pemiscott County, Lake County, and O'Brien County, it looks like. Um, no new information with those, but yeah. something to notice. What Grant's been tracking is it's actually formed a supercell, and those ones we've been talking about are very uh, capable of having that strong rotation and becoming long-lived. The activity we're watching in the boot heel, this is actually a linear system, so what we're still going to be tracking within this, kind of like what we had last weekend, where when we have these lines of storms, that can at least have some kinks in it and start to spin up a quick tornado. So we're watching some of those. Right now, there looks to be a little kink and rotation just to the uh, east of Carruthers Bell. That's going to yeah, right be there. in the southern portion of Lake County. And then there's a no another little area of weak rotation in the very, very southern portion of the boot heel. Uh, that's going to be south of Cod Point. So that actually is not going to be as a big of a concern because that's outside of our heartland. But we're still going to be watching very closely that broad rotation that is just to the east of Carothersville. So a little bit of a different situation compared to what Grant's been tracking, that supercell producing uh, a, a tornado. Again, a lot of structural damage. People have been trapped. Emergency personnel is going out. I'm still trying to get some reports coming in. The latest report was that that tornado was near Eddyville and it looks to be uh, heading for almost a direct hit of Princeton. This will be just to the south of Eddyville. So if you're near Princeton or around Princeton right now, that tornado warning is not extended into your area, but just based on how this system has right. been and it's been extending, you will be in a location that still could be of concern as that will be moving off to the northeast. It really has been pushing off to the northeast, uh, ranging at about 50, 55 miles an hour. So I'm pretty we'll be sure that, that they're going to be issuing a warning for Princeton here very short. I have a feeling. So I that, can't, that's I can't why I wanted to bring won't. that yeah. up. Grant's putting that track up there. So this is a 30 minute track on the tornado. The tornado in 30 minutes will be out of our viewing area. We'll say goodbye to this storm and then we'll focus more on the activity that is in Lake County and O'Brien County and the storms that are headed towards Carter County right now and they're moving in parts of Reynolds County headed towards Madison and Wayne counties. Those could strengthen up and become bad later on this evening. But uh, right now there is nothing on our radar that comes even close to this. This has just been an incredible intense tornado that has continued to move across the entire area. You can see crossroads at 1012, Princeton at 1026. I think the last time we checked it was 1028. Now it's 1026. So that is what 18 minutes. So again, this is moving very, very fast as this tornado and I'm sure we're going to start getting some reports of how bad uh, the damage is in the uh, Mayfield, Kentucky area, in the Benton, Kentucky area, because I know Mayfield unfortunately took a direct hit from this circulation as it went right through there and uh, the debris ball went right across Mayfield, Kentucky. So this tornado is skirting the southern end of uh, Lake Barkley. Uh, the Barkley, the dam is located like right here for the Cumberland River and then uh, if so, yeah, Eddyville is what she was mentioning early. This is so there's a lot of houses south of Eddyville along Lake Barkley. I'm not sure how many houses are on the other side of the lake, but you're going to first, then it's going to cross the lake and go through the southern side of Eddyville. It will be crossing Highway 730 very, very shortly, and then it will head towards the Princeton area. Matter of fact, there's the tornado warning that uh, Lisa and I were saying was going to be issued here very, very shortly. That tornado warning is for the Princeton area. So Princeton, you are now under a tornado warning for this cell as it rapidly moves off to the north and to the east. Again, based on the current speed, Princeton, it will be in your area 15 to 20 minutes. Get in your safe spot now. This has been a serious event. This has been a very dangerous tornado that has been causing damage for quite some time. And it is going to be moving through the Princeton area in about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want to wait 15 minutes to get to your safe spot. You want to get to your safe spot now. If you live anywhere along Interstate 24 on the north side of Lake Barkley, you want to get in your safe spot right now. Eddyville, especially the southern side of Eddyville, get in your basement. If you don't have a basement, again, the lowest level of your home, put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. That's our tornado. It continues to race off to the northeast at about 55 
to 60 miles per hour. Now I've been tracking this now at 60 pretty much all evening because of how fast it's been going. There's the rotation. You can't, you can't miss it. A very, very strong rotating thunderstorm and uh, still it's on the ground. This thing has been on the ground for a very, this tornado touched down in Hickman County, uh, we think. It could have touched down in Arkansas and it was on the ground the whole time. I do think the storm cycled in Hickman County. The first tornado weakened and the second tornado formed, but this tornado has been on the ground since Hickman County's. So I don't know how long this is. This has been on the ground from Hickman County, but it's got to be 50 or 60 miles that it's been on the ground. Um, I don't have a ruler on this, this, this radar that I can look at right now, but uh, this is just a, a tremendous uh, tornado that has been on the ground for quite some time and it has done a tremendous amount of damage from what we've heard and I, I fear uh, what the reports when they start coming in. I mean right now like Lisa said the I think the weather service in Paducah is out of power so um, we they, they are out of power so we have Springfield taking over right now. Unfortunately that means that we lose some radar coming in so that's something that we are we are watching but overall this is still going to be a concern almost outside of the heartland but as Grant mentioned this is moving to the southern portions of Eddyville and will continue to looks to be right now making a direct hit over Princeton so please if you're in those areas so take that's shelter. that's an interesting point let me let me you would just mention something about the, the radar. The radar and and that's something so, uh, that uh, so, so we may have an old radar their, their, image gen here. their generator failed. So it's not it, Grant's looking at a different source back here. It wasn't working when I was trying to switch over. So um, I've been trying to pull some information from Memphis's radar to see if we're getting any of that. What we're also noticing, I'm still going to go quickly back to those other tornado warnings that we're watching right now. This is going to really not have a big threat anymore for areas of the boot heel, but it is going to have a threat for areas of Lake County. That's where the screen you're seeing or the box you're seeing below Grant and I, that's showing where that tornado warning is still going to be four that will clip southern portions of Lake County and really the rotation on this uh, is not looking to be something that's very concerning at the moment but there still are a couple little areas along that line to where we could at least have some slight rotation so really the worst of it looks to be I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see from the tornado warnings well off to our south those south of the booth heel those do not look to be impacting us and in fact they look to stay south right now of Lake and Obion counties. They might clip southern portions of Weekly County as that moves through. So we'll be tracking that as it continues to move through. Again, this tornado warning is still going to include portions of Lake County currently, but there is no confirmed tornado on the ground for that. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Again, still dealing with two uh, tornado warnings across the heartland and the one that Grant's been tracking is going to have significant damage as it's been moving so, through the, our areas in the boot heel, Kentucky and Tennessee. So Paducah took a big hit. The radar is actually down. This is this tornado is located right here now. So it's moving close to the Princeton area. I'm going to step away. I'm going to try and remove the Paducah radar from my source and put in uh, so it will pick up the uh, the source from uh, from Evansville, Indiana. So what's happening right now is we're getting old information because the radar is down. And so I want to take the radar out and there we go. Now I'm looking at it from the uh, now I'm looking at it from Evansville, Indiana. And so the tornado, well, it's still nope, that's Paducah. I need to take Paducah out of the velocity. See, the problem is, is we have Paducah set up in there. I just wish it would die down when. OK, so the so the tornado is um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm not I can't play this. So what I'm going to have to do is just leave the velocity up like this because we are getting old data uh, from Paducah right now because they've been hit by severe thunderstorm. So uh, we were showing the tornado right here. The tornado is right here on the northern side of Lake Barkley. It's moving into the Princeton. It'll be in the Princeton area very, very shortly. Now, uh, we did get another tornado warning. I'm not sure what that is. I don't want to touch it uh, because I don't want to lose this velocity. So I'm going to just stick with this right here until it gets through the Princeton area. Uh, what was the uh, tornado? Oh, that's a so new that tornado, tornado warning. So that tornado warning, that's going to be uh, for this thunderstorm, which has had a severe thunderstorm warning.
That's going to be for furthest eastern portions of Reynolds County, southern portions of Iron County. So if you're in a desert, please take shelter. And that's going to move into southern portions of Madison um, County. Madison so County. we got Marquand so, too. Yep, that's going to be heading out there. So I'll kind of be tracking that you and that the for storm us. down south. Right now, Grant's again still tracking that confirmed on the ground tornado. And we still and, and again, this is way away from the from the Evansville radar site. Just a tremendous velocity couplet. So we do have a tornado on the ground. It's moving towards Princeton right now. Princeton and Cedar Bluff is the other town. If you're near Cedar Bluff, that's to the southeast of Princeton slightly, you're going to be in that zone of concern as this is moving closer to you. And Grant said, you know, this is going to be out of here uh, definitely probably within the next 20, 30 minutes. So very quick moving system off to the northeast still. You'll really want to take shelter if you are near Princeton or Cedar Bluff as this is moving your way very right. quickly. So, and also I want to shout out if you're in Fredericktown, I know you're probably a little nervous. I don't know if they're sounding the sirens. Uh, that official warning is south of Fredericktown uh, it, for Madison County. I know Fredericktown, you got hit hard on in October uh, by a very, very strong tornado. Uh, this possible tornado is moving into southern Iron County right now, about to move into southern southern Madison County. Uh, that should stay to the south of Fredericktown. But our biggest concern right now is this storm right here moving into the Princeton area. And again, we have a, I, I had to switch sources because the source has Paducah in it and it was showing up as old data. Again, Paducah still saying we've got the tornado right here. Another tornado warning has popped up. Lisa, do you know what that tornado warning is for? Um, the one that popped up, that is, I'm going back and forth between here, still tracking the one that you're showing. Yeah, the one that, that popped up, that was the one that we were talking about that's now going to be moving into southern portions of Iron County and southern portions of Madison County. Okay. So that's the, uh, the main thing we're watching. We still have that one tornado warning. I can zoom out so you can see it. That is still clipping southern portions of Lake County. Uh, in that location, we've been tracking just some very slight kinks in this line, but really looking to have maybe a little rotation by areas near Wrigley. That's going to be in Lake County. The other warning really that we're focusing on, I'll zoom back up. That's going to be oh. for northern portions of the heartland across southeast Missouri. So oh, talk about it's, this it's, one. it's a it's a catastrophic damage again for Princeton. So yes. every time we get one of these violent tornadoes that uh, are headed towards um, highly populated areas, uh, they issue these uh, catastrophic tag lines to it. And the reason I'm coming over here is I'm still, what I'm seeing on our, on our signal is, no, okay, it, it has moved. Okay, we just got an update. I was worried that because of the server through Paducah, we may be getting Evansville radar through Paducah as well, but we're not. This is updating live. This tornado is moving into Princeton right now. If you live in Princeton, you need to be in your safe spot. We've been talking about you for well over an hour. We've been mentioning these towns well out ahead. So that tornado is moving into Princeton as we speak. Again, this tornado is moving off to the northeast at 60 miles per hour. It will be out of our viewing area very shortly. But until it is, we're going to definitely stick with this. I'm very concerned about uh, the amount of damage we're going to find out that this uh, this tornado has produced because it has been on the ground for quite some time. I can also see Lisa checking up on the velocity there. There is a velocity couplet near Des Arc that is in southern Iron County. That's a possible tornado that will be moving into Madison County here very shortly. That's what that tornado warning is for as well. And again, that tornado is headed towards Marquand, but uh, it is nowhere near as intense as what we're seeing here moving into Princeton. Again, I can't show you the debris balls. I can't do all that activity now with this storm because we've lost the uh, one of the radar sites and if I go back into the play mode it's just going to show me the Paducah radar site and uh, I, I, I don't want that so again we've got a violent a possible violent tornado strong tornado at least moving into the Princeton area right now this is the same storm that has been causing a tremendous amount of issues as it crossed across um, parts of Lake Barkley uh, Lake uh, Kentucky Lake it is now moving into the Princeton area and uh, eventually it'll be moving out of Caldwell County and we'll be able to say goodbye to it. Uh, but we have been dealing with this storm for quite some time. I'm going to keep that up there because I have to walk back and forth to look at some different sites because I want to make sure I'm getting all the information and I can't just rely on our radar right this moment. 
uh, because the fact that Paducah has gone down. I am seeing a little bit of a debris signature from Evansville, Indiana on that site. I'm going to check the uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky radar, which is a little closer, I think, and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, we do not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a big debris ball going right into Princeton, right into Princeton. Um, I tell you what, folks, I don't know how easy this would be for you to do. Um, for, I'm talking to the folks in the in the uh, control panel. Um, if you could put the old Titan source as one of the windows, that would be great. And even if you could put the old Titan source behind me, because I'm, I'm looking at a radar that I can't. I can't look at through our system right now, um, but it shows a debris ball and we can track the debris ball, but the debris ball is moving into Princeton right now. Uh, we are seeing the debris ball on the uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky uh, radar, and it is definitely moving across the Princeton area right now. A tornado is on the ground. Are you guys trying to talk to me? It looked like, okay. Thank you very much. These They've guys had are some power flashes in Princeton. OK, these too, guys in the booth are working extremely through. hard and sometimes it's just doing things on the fly can be a be tough. And I appreciate all the work they're doing back there to to help us keep the entire heartland safe tonight. Again, we've got a tornado. OK, so what we're seeing there, this is our other source and it's it's kind of hard to make out, but there is definitely a debris signature right there in the center. Um, if you would, Lisa, put the cursor right over the debris signature, if you would. You can see that little, yeah, right there. So there it is. So that's moving into Princeton right now. So we still have a debris signature. It's right, oh, thanks guys. That's perfect. That is perfect. So this is a source we're getting off the radar. This is a different radar. This is what we use sometimes to analyze the storms. If you'd we like me to switch over to, to CCs to see the debris or the velocity, just let me know. Oh yeah, hit CC for me. Boom, and we can look at that. That is a tremendous amount of debris. It's on the south side of Princeton right now. So we have a very large damaging tornado moving along the south side of Princeton right now. And again, it's racing off to the northeast at about uh, 60 miles per hour. Now I cannot track on this system, unfortunately. I can't do a, a cell track with it, but we can at least still see it. That's why we have different sources of information. In case one thing goes down, we've got another way to keep you safe. All right, go ahead and go back to the reflectivity, if you would, please, because this is the tornado. You can really see it right there. Large hail wrapping around, heavy rain. This is the tornado right there. We've got, uh, wow, it just continues to go off, uh, coming off to the north. We've got a confirmed tornado in Illinois. Is that up north? I I'm thinking that's out of our area. Um... Just zoom out on your on your uh, WSI radar and see where that uh, purple. Yeah, that's yeah, that's way up that's there. That's way okay, up, good, so good. that's not going to. I just noticed us. that, and you see that you see what's behind me here. I'm looking at the warnings right here, and see, I see that purple. I know there's a confirmed tornado. This black is tornado emergency, and that's what this is right here. Tornado emergency because of a large damaging tornado that is moving through the uh, Princeton area and looks like the Cedar Bluff area as well. This is going to be headed towards Dawson Springs. Once it gets towards the Dawson Springs area, it will be out of our neck of the woods. So again, a very damaging tornado moving through the Princeton area as we speak, moving off to the east or moving off to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. And I can also see, I don't know if you can do the three box again. I, I, I know I'm asking a lot. If you can't, just tell me. I know you guys are doing a great job to get me this debris signature. Okay, not with Titan. I understand that. Okay. Um, you want me to bring up CC? I can do that um, you can there's see CC. We can see that. Now, if you could, let's go ahead and take Lisa uh, full, if you can. Can you do that for me? I want her to update you on the storm going into Madison County. Just show, so we've got yeah, a possible so, tornado. So that's what in. we're watching, a possible tornado. We can see that rotation, and really it's going to be the change of colors right here, just on the borderline of Iron County, heading into areas of southern portions of Madison County. So no confirmed tornado, but that's going to be making its way onto Highway State Highway N. If you are along State Highway N, this is going to continue looking to be moving off to the east-northeast, and this will actually continue to take that path and looking right now to be making its way towards Marquand 
if again this tornado warning continues through southern portions of Madison County. So we're tracking that right now. This is going to be the next big story. Some slight rotation just on the border. I think right now at the moment from also what I'm looking at uh, Iron County not looking to be as problematic or something that we should be concerned with, but we are going to be watching areas uh, along and around portions order. Uh, there might be some slight rotation that I'm getting. A, I'm, I have other sources in front of right, me too. Right, right. No, I know. Being able to check out near Annapolis. There could be some slight rotation. There's a little kink and I can see if I can point it out and zoom in on radar here. Uh, there's a little kink in the line and really this is where we're watching a little bit of slight rotation that I'm picking up on as well. So a couple areas of rotation that tornado warning still on this and that's actually going to be for the next 30 minutes. So if you're in portions of Madison County, southern portions of Madison, Madison County, please get in your safe spot. That's going to be where there could be a potential tornado within these thunderstorms. Grant's been tracking again uh, the activity off to our east in Kentucky, focusing really quickly, just giving you an update on the activity uh, to our south, the boot heel. This has been clipping portions of Lake County and in portions of Obion County, not looking to be as problematic at the moment. Most of those stronger storms with the thicker rotation, that's going to be off to our south. So we're not leaving out our southern areas. We're still watching as some strong thunderstorms move through those locations, but the bigger story is going to be some of that rotation we're watching again just over the border okay. uh, from areas of Iron County moving into Madison. County. All right, thanks for that update, Lisa. Let's take a look now again. Boy, that debris signature is much stronger. Go ahead and put it back to the CC for me real quick. That's what that is right there. Matter of fact, can you zoom in just a little? There you go. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Again, we have a tornado now on the ground of Princeton. This is the edge of Caldwell County. Once we get it out of Caldwell County, we'll say goodbye to the storm. and We're going to focus strictly on the storms that are moving into our western counties right now. But this storm is causing significant damage right now. All right, go back to the reflectivity, if you would, for me, please. Thank you. There's the debris signature right there. And again, it's moving off to the to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. Again, I can't track this. Lisa, I don't know if you could do a just a just a track. Just let me know how many here do this. Put a marker. You know how to do the marker? Yep. So put a place a marker right there. Right click. Yeah, place marker and then put the cursor right here where my finger is. Where your fingers about right there, right? There. No, 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 no. Just you don't have to do that. Um, OK, finish what you're doing and then we're going to close that out. Close that out. You don't need to track it. Just put the cursor. Don't even drag anything. Just put the cursor right there and down at the bottom. It should say nautical miles. Uh, let's see on the bottom. We're talking about 5.96. OK, five point. So so that's about six miles to go. Basically six, seven miles until this tornado is out of Caldwell County. So we're going to be with this probably for about three or four more minutes. Thanks, Lisa. That's what I needed. I just needed to know the distance again. Can't track with this system, but at least we can still show you where the danger is. There is our tornado right there to the east of Princeton to the northeast of Cedar Bluff, and it continues to move off to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. It's going to be headed towards Dawson Springs, and once it gets towards the Dawson Springs area, it is out of our viewing area. This storm has been with us for quite some time and unfortunately has caused a significant amount of damage as it continues to move off to the east northeast or northeast at about 60 miles per hour there it just updated you see how close it is almost out of our area lisa so again about two minutes and then this will be out of caldwell county and this damaging tornado will be east of our area she's still got a good eye on the storm that's in madison county yes there is a tornado warning in madison county we are seeing some rotation uh, it is nowhere near as intense as what I'm showing you right here, but in a minute we're going to start focusing all of our attention on the new line of storms that's going to be moving into the heartland once we get what we know is a very dangerous situation out of the heartland. Again, Princeton looks like the direct hit to your south. Benton took a direct hit. Mayfield took a direct hit. We're about to say goodbye to this tornado as it heads towards Dawson Springs. So. Uh, folks in Dawson Springs, there it is. Thank you, Lisa. There's the debris. It's moving off towards the Dawson Springs area right now. This tornado has been on the ground since southern Hickman or southern Fulton County. Excuse me. This has been on the ground for a long time after this storm produced another tornado that was on the ground 
for 60, 70, 80 miles. This has been an unprecedented storm. It has produced at least two extremely large, damaging, long track tornadoes, and it is still on the ground as it is about to move across the area and move into the Dawson Springs area. You can see that we have this area right here. The tornado emergency has been canceled. The tornado emergency has been canceled, but uh, they uh, just issued a tornado emergency for Dawson, Dawson Springs. Springs. So, so they're going to do that for it. Dawson Springs. Give me an update on the tornado warning in Madison County, if you will. Yeah, so we take Lisa full. Really, uh, take take this warning seriously. There's reports coming in from Mayfield, which took a direct hit, and uh, we actually had a report coming in of a factory that has people trapped within it. So crews, emergency crews, trying to get in. What we're watching right now, still this tornado warning that's moving into portions of Madison County. This, at least, is going to be issued as I'm looking at a source uh, beneath me right now until 11 o'clock so another 30 minutes within this again we only have a couple of sources since we have uh, paducas down right now so it's going to be kind of hard to tell but right here in southwestern portions of Madison County. That's where that rotation is. I'm going to zoom in so you can see some of the roads along that. This is going to be State Highway N, and this is actually going to continue moving off to the uh, about the east northeast, and we're going to continue to see that move across Highway C. Then past that, it'll be along Highway 67, State Highway 67. So not looking to have a lot of towns, but that doesn't mean that there won't be any homes within that. Marquand, you're going to be the next area that we're watching. So again, uh, you're going to see it kind of appear and disappear just because of the fact that our radar is down where the rotation is. I'm going to see if I can track this really quickly so you can at least see a line um, heading out across our area. So that could reach Marquand closer towards 1110 based on that track. So we're going to continue to watch that. If this continues to hang on to that warning, that's then going to move into potentially northern portions of Perry County or southern portions of, of Perry County, northern portions of Bollinger County as that will be moving through. So yeah, still watching that rotation right there as this continues to move in. Um, again, no confirmed tornado on this. And as I'm going to look at the reports really quickly, we are not talking about any kind of uh, damage reports that's moved into that area. The main concern that we've been tracking is where was where Grant has been talking about. It has moved past yeah. Princeton and towards Dawson Springs. Yeah. So, so uh, with that said, we're going to let that storm go on off to the east. And so now we're going to focus mainly on what we're focusing on now. We we can get rid of Titan now. We don't have to show Titan. We can go back to me being with Max 1. So I can be on Max 1. And uh, there will be times I'll have to walk away and check things because of, like I said, we do not have the Paducah radar site, even though it will be showing up as being there. But it is old. Um, so I'm trying to set something up here so I can have my... Uh, my idea of what I'm looking for. Again, we're tracking a tornado that is near New Bern, that is north of Dyersburg. That's going to be moving into um, Weekly County here shortly. So we've got a couple of, of events we're worried about. We got another tornado warning that's just been issued for the Paducah area or just to the uh, east of Paducah. Now, unfortunately, this is the tornado warning. When we zoom in, we're not going to be able to see it because it's going to be old data. But again, we've got a tornado warning now for. Uh, Parts of uh, Pope County, uh, Livingston County, and Crittenden County. Uh, that is just to the north of uh, the Paducah area. Again, you can see the Paducah area. You see how the radar has gone away. I'm going to zoom into this, and hopefully we can pick up Evansville. And unfortunately, we can't. Um, let me kind of zoom on down to here. There we go. So there's the Evansville radar. So we're seeing the, the possible tornado right there. If I zoom in too close, it'll go away, but we've got that possible tornado that is going through Southern Pope County right now, moving into Livingston County in Kentucky, and this will eventually go into Crittenden County in Kentucky. So there you go. You have a tornado warning out for parts of Pope County. It's also parts of uh, Massac County, Pope County, and Livingston County, and parts of Crittenden County. The tornado emergency now has moved out of our area. We still have that tornado warning, but that tornado has moved out of the area. We got a brand new tornado warning. Let's see what's going on with this. This is for the uh, Union City area. And again, we can take a look at this storm. I'm going to pan down to the south and uh, get it on the um, 
And that rotation right now, like I said, I'm looking at a different source that looks to be just to the northwest of Troy. Um, and that is going to be making its way in between Union City and Woodland Mills. So if you're in that area, if I, I know mine zooming in, you, you can't really see it there. Um, if we need to pull up Titan, we can. I'll leave that up to Grant. No, it's it's just I, we just the, have to, to go through so many different radars right now. We do. So. The other area of interest that's going to be southeastern portion portions of uh, of Obion County. We are just yeah. to the south of Obion. There's rotation that looks to be intensifying just south. Here, so that's go ahead. that has been uh, take you, you keep talking. Go ahead and take me because the Paducah radar site's gone. So Lisa's talking about this rotation right here moving into Obion County. That is the new tornado warning. She's Correct. also talking about this kink right here. That's going to go across southeastern Obion County and move into Weekly County. So we have two possible tornadoes in northwestern Tennessee right here that we're going to be concerning ourselves with as they move off to the uh, to the uh, northeast at uh, a pretty rapid clip as well. So again, we are uh, seeing some pretty significant weather right now, and that's going to continue with us. Looks like things are improving briefly for uh, the boot heel. Uh, which is great because they took a very definite hard hit. And then we've got this other storm. We've got two storms. One that's moving towards Piedmont looks pretty intense. And then the storm here that is moving into Madison County. And that one's strengthening just a bit. So um, continuing to watch that rotation in Madison County, especially right since, yeah, you can see it on on, on uh, grants. I have it also pulled up on mine because I know yours will kind of pick which radar it's choosing it from. But uh, some of that rotation looks to be very close to Highway C. So if you're near Highway C, at least be aware that you could have some very strong winds and you want to get in your safe spot. This track still looks to be moving to the north of Marquand. So if you are near Marquand, take shelter or at least plan on having an emergency plan because that's going to be moving again just to the south of you as well. We are watching this at least going that's going to be out for another 20 minutes. So southern portions of Marquand County, you are within that tornado warning there. We're still watching a couple other tornado warnings. One of them that's going to be near Paducah and the other one that's going to clip uh, southern portions of Obion County uh, and northern portions of Obion County with that one tornado that had some or at least radar indicated tornado that had some rotation moving closer to Union City. So right. a lot going on, a lot we're tracking. This is why you want to stay tuned. We're continuing to to watch three tornado warnings right now. That one tornado, which had a confirmed tornado, very long track, that looks to be at least pushing outside of our heartland. So we don't need to worry about that anymore, but we still are concerned with many more storms as they're developing and pushing through during the evening hour. So and, I'm going to continue to and track. And you can see this evening. right here, Lisa. This is going to be headed towards Mount Vernon. We've got a, a thunderstorm with a possible tornado trying to develop. So Mount Vernon, that could be headed towards you shortly. Uh, we've got uh, Again, this tornado that she's talking about going through southern Madison County right now. We've got another storm that may produce a tornado that is moving into Wayne County as we speak out of southern Reynolds County. We have a quick spin up type tornado that's moving through parts of northern Obion County right now. We've got a quick spin up type tornado that's moving into southeastern Obion County and about to move into Weekly County. And we have another tornado or possible tornado that is moving now out of Pope County and moving into Livingston County and eventually Crittenden County. Again, until we get the Paducah radar site back, it's going to be hard to do a lot of zooming in on these because when we zoom in, there will be nothing to be seen because Paducah covers most of the area. And when you zoom in, the, the radar program takes the closest radar. Um, so with that said, this is a big concern. This is going to be headed towards northern Bullinger County and again, northern Cape Girardeau County. We've got a couple of tornadoes, uh, tornado warnings that we're going to be watching there. We could possibly see more tornado warnings issued. I'm going to kind of well, I, I can't stop it because if I put the reflectivity on, it's going to go away. And uh, but we can kind of well, we got a confirmed tornado now down moving towards uh, southeast or that spin up we were talking about. I'm going to try to get this on Memphis. So uh, I'm going to pan up until I can get this to come on. We've got a confirmed tornado right here. Or is it going to be with this area right here? Let's right now, that's just to the south of us. Um, that's just south of Trimble. So if you are near Trimble, that rotation is to the south. It looks to possibly, based on the, the route it's taking right now, that's going to be getting very close to Mason Hall. So we'll be watching that location as Grant's pointing right there at where that rotation is. Yeah, that's a pretty tight rotation. Again, this is a quick spin-up type tornado. 
Uh, this is not like the long track damaging tornado, but that's what we're seeing. The possible tornado again. This is about to move into and that one has a debris. Th yeah, there's a debris center, believe so, it or not. So yeah, it's on the ground. We have a tornado on the ground right here, and uh, let's go ahead and see if we can keep this. Uh, we, we know where the tornado is. We're going to back out and then I'm going to pan off to the north and see if the radar will pop back up. OK, now we're on the Memphis radar. So there is the tornado again. It is going to clip the extreme southeastern parts of Obion County. It looks like I guess that's Mason Hall. And then if it holds together, it'll be headed towards the Martin, Tennessee area and Dredston. Again, I could put the uh, reflect the, the velocity on there and that's the tornado right there. And again, when we take a look and we scope it and we take a look at the debris signature, there is a small area of debris showing up as well with this storm right there. And um, it does match up with it does match up with the velocity. So you can see there is the lowering. And when we put the shear on, there it is. So we do have a tornado on the ground and this is just south of Obion County. Uh, but it will be moving into the Obion County area and it eventually will be moving into um, in, into the uh, Weekly County area as well. So it's going to be crossing just close to Mason Hall. So if you live in Mason Hall, you need to be seeking shelter and then near the Martin, Tennessee area, you need to be seeking shelter as well with that system. All right, let's expand things back out and take a look at uh, all these tornado warnings that we have. Again, we have numerous tornado warnings right now. As you can see, we've got a tornado going, a possible tornado moving across southern Madison County right now. We got a possible tornado north of Union City. We've got a confirmed tornado right here moving towards Mason Hall and eventually moving into Weekly County. And we have a possible tornado right here moving across parts of uh, parts of uh, Livingston County and in um, going into Crittenden County as well. I'm going to try and get Evansville to pick this up for me. So I'm going to do the reflectivity and this should be re this should be um, Evansville. So we've got a look on this storm. Now just don't go away. OK, so it's right there at the bottom and I want to get the winds on here so we can get a better look at this storm. And yeah, there it is. Possible tornado right there in Livingston County. I want to do something else since we're uh, pretty close. That looks like a pretty tight couplet. Uh, is the reflectivity is not all that impressive, but the velocity is impressive. This is in northern Livingston County. We're not seeing any debris signature right now, but uh, right here we're seeing a possible tornado. This is in northern Livingston County right here uh, that is going to be moving into Crittenden County here very, very shortly, and it should stay just south of Hardin County the way it looks right now. But again, we have a possible tornado in northern Livingston County. Moving into Crittenden County, you can see all these tornado warnings. That thing is still on the ground, still doing damage. Unbelievable how long that tornado has been on the ground. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody was able to hear the warnings and everybody was able to get to a place of safety. So um, we're going to put this thing back into motion because I want to take a look at a couple of other cells. I want to take a look at the storms that are moving into uh, Weekly and Obion counties in Tennessee because we have a confirmed tornado, at least on radar. Uh, the radar signature is showing a tornado. And so let's put the reflectivity on and I'm going to pan down again. So it picks up on the Memphis radar site. There we go. And it's going into Mason Hall right now. There's the couplet right there. And uh, let's see if we have a, uh, a debris signature still. It's getting a little far away from the uh, from the uh, radar site in uh, in Memphis, so it's going to be it may be kind of hard to get the debris signature. Uh, but again, this was a there was a debris signature just moving into there it is. Yeah, it's definitely on the ground. There is a tornado moving into Mason Hall right now. So if you're in Mason Hall, you need to be seeking shelter. Clear sign right there of a tornado. It matches up with the velocity with the velocity right here. There's the rotation and uh, there is the uh, signature of debris. So we have a tornado on the ground moving into Mason Hall. That's in Obion, southern southeastern Obion County, and it will eventually be moving into uh, Weekly County here shortly. So we're going to get I'm going to zoom back out. I want to take a look at uh, Madison County and Wayne County. So we're going to have to uh, 
So pretty, pretty much all I'm getting so far, no reports of a confirmed tornado, but we are seeing still that most of Madison County is under that tornado warning. There is some pretty tight rotation right now off to the northwest of Marquand. So if you are in Marquand, the center of this looks to move just to the north of you, but to be in the safe side, I'd probably get in your safe spot as I can zoom out a little bit. This then is going to move into the northern portions of Bollinger County. So uh, if you're near Sedgwickville, just keep an eye, especially Scopus as well, that you could potentially be in the path of this making it to your location if you live in those areas. Uh, Grant, zooming into yeah, that, right you can there, see that right there. That's that rotation that we're watching. Again, nothing confirmed at the moment, but that is going to be the area of interest as we're watching that tornado warning in portions of Madison County that looks to move into northern portions of Bollinger County. Yeah, so um, along Highway 72 here in northern Bollinger County, uh, this rotation is moving towards your area. Like Lisa said, it looks like the rotation will stay just to the north of Marquand. It'll be coming right around State Highway A and into 51. I think this is the Patton area right around uh, Highway 72. Again, we don't have a warning out for uh, northern Bullinger County, and I got to tell you, this rotation is not all that impressive. Uh, it is definitely rotating, but uh, it's nothing like we've seen earlier tonight, so probably not seeing a tornado with this, but uh, something we'll definitely have to keep an eye on as it moves off to the uh, East, are they? Tr what's the speed they're tracking on this uh, this new line of storms? I haven't had time to to measure the speed on these. You, of this this one that's moving through uh, the, with the tornado warning in Madison County. Yes, yes, that one. Um, right now, it looks to be moving at about east at about 50 miles an hour. Okay, so 50 miles per hour, and uh, and just want to give you a quick update that tornado warning that was. Uh, in between Woodland Mills and Union City, there's some weak rotation there looking to be a little more broad. So I don't know if that's going to be extended, but that's an area that we'll still have to watch um, as well as that still that that kink in that line looks to be just to the south where that confirmed tornado is to the south of the heartland. That that still may clip portions of Obion County and really if that confirmed tornado looks to sit with us, that's going to move into areas of Weekly County. So. Uh, that's going to be the next area of interest as we're watching this right now. I'm just trying to look at a quick report to see if there's anything coming in from those. Um, I'm not seeing anything at the moment other than the fact that yes, there could be potential tornadoes within those. We'll have to watch that. Um, it looks like we they just, just had did, another uh, Bullinger County, did they not? Uh, they just issued a new tornado warning. I'm yeah, looking right the, now. It's for the Bullinger County. For Bullinger County, it says Cape Highway Toronto 72 area. Perry. So I don't know if that's. I guess I'm going to zoom. Matt, I don't know how much that's going to clip Cape Girardeau County, but it says in there. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be near Apple yep. Creek, I'm sure. So that's going to be I'm waiting for that to update. That looks to be again for radar indicated tornado. Nothing confirmed. Um, the thunderstorm it, was was located near Marquand or seven miles southeast of Fredericktown. So that's still moving east at about 50 miles an hour. Yeah, and so I'm going to zoom in here. So this is the rotation that Lisa was pointing out. That was to the northwest of Marquand. It's headed towards 72 right now. Um, and uh, again, this is it right here. Uh, it's, it's not extremely strong, but there is rotation. So if you're in northern Bullinger County and southern Perry County and extreme, I guess, northwestern Cape Girardeau County, uh, we need to uh, be seen about seeking shelter here, getting in your safe spot. And what we're probably going to have to do here again in a second is uh, I'm probably going to have to go back to the Titan source here um, and have Lisa drive it while I'm in front of the wall. Uh, and right there's now. definitely there's definitely rotation in that. Uh, well, this one's going to be outside. That was that warning in Princeton. I'm still seeing some rotation uh, just to the north northwest of Salem. All right, do me um, a favor. Go to the panels, and I want you to do. Well, I want to get it to one panel. It's on two panels right now, up there at the very top. There you go, one panel. Yep. All right, now expand out for me, if you would, um, so so I can kind of get my bearings. Okay, so we have, um, and which radar are we on? We're uh, on Memphis? Currently, right now, we're on Memphis. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do, switch over to if, if you would, I want you to switch over first to Evansville, like you're doing there, and I want to check on the storm that's going through Livingston County right now. So we're going to zoom into that storm uh, once it loads up.
and uh, we'll get a better look at it. So zoom in a little more beautiful. Now go ahead and uh, if you would give me the velocity on there so I can see where the possible tornado is. Yeah, we still have right that here. possible tornado that is moving in northern Livingston County and it's going to be moving towards Marion, Kentucky. This is going to be in the Crittenden County area as it moves off the northeast at about uh, at about uh, 60 miles per hour. So we have a possible tornado here in Livingston County moving into Crittenden County as we speak. All right, go back to the reflectivity if you would and let's expand out and now we want to go to the St. Louis site and we want to check out the storm that's moving into northern Bullinger County. And as soon as the Paducah site's up and running, we'll be back to normal where we can do everything from the wall. But right now, it's just we can't do it right now. Uh, so here's the possible tornado right here. It's moving into northern Bullinger County. You can see here's Patton. Uh, there's Cedricville. Uh, this tornado is going to be crossing into extreme southern Perry County, possibly, uh, and northwestern uh, Cape Girardeau County. And again, it's moving towards the Apple Creek area. Uh, again, uh, we got some folks. I know a lot of folks. I got I got a buddy of mine right here, uh, Ryan. If you're watching, I want you to get in your safe spot, my friend. This tornado or possible tornado is headed your way. We do just have a new severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued for northern Wayne County. Again, we'll have to watch that as well. But this is our possible tornado. Would you uh, put on the velocity for me? Thank you very much. Yeah, the, the rotation is looking a little better now, uh, Lisa, as it's just to the north of Marquand, and it's about to cross into northern. Uh, yeah, there yeah, it is. There you go. Yeah. See so, yeah, folks, if you're in the Patton area, we need to be seeking shelter. If you're anywhere along Highway 72 in northern Bullinger County, Sedgwickville, Patton, you need to be in your safe spot uh, as this possible tornado is moving into your neck of the woods right now. The rotation is getting stronger right here as it moves off to the uh, east northeast. These are moving east northeast at 50, if I'm not mistaken, correct? They are moving. Yeah, they've been moving off more so to the east, but these northern ones look to be more to the east northeast okay. at about now. I, they're putting it down closer. Uh, let me switch over to the right storm here. Um, yeah, they're moving at about 50 miles an hour. Okay, so that's what we that's what we were assuming. So again, on this, I can't draw out cell tracks, but we can stay with it as it's moving into the Patton area, Highway 51 and Highway 72 intersecting here in northern Bullinger County. It's going to be headed towards the Cedricville area. The upper Whitewater River is in this general area. I'm giving out some land uh, landmarks so you know where, where we're talking about. That's where this possible tornado is moving. And if it continues to move off to the north and east, it will be moving into the Oak Ridge area. And it will likely stay just to the north of the Millersville area. If you live in Jackson, if you live in Cape Girardeau, again, Cape Girardeau County is in this warning. You're not going to be hit by this storm. Uh, so if the sirens are going off right now in Jackson, I don't know if they are. Sometimes when the warning is issued for a county, the sirens will sound. I just want to let you know this is the extreme northwestern part of uh, Cape Girardeau County uh, from I, Oak Ridge to the northwest. I yes, want to interrupt you for a minute because they're going to continue the tornado warning for portions of Obine and Weekly County and they say a confirmed tornado was located over Kenton. So that's 11 miles southwest of Martin and it's moving east at about okay. 60 miles an hour. So we were watching that tight rotation there. So let's, um, let's zoom out I if you would and, and go let's, to let's go to the Memphis radar. Click on the Memphis radar site. And so it's this storm right here. Again, we do have that that looked like a possible tornado. I think that they're going to let that expire. But yeah, so we've got, yeah, we've got a wrapping up right here. I don't know if it's going to show up on velocity. It may be in the purple haze you area. Can, no, it's showing up. It. Yeah, we definitely have that tornado. Hit the CC for me again. We did have a, yeah, there's a, little there's a right tornado. There. The tornado is on the ground in southeastern Obion County, and it's moving towards Martin, Tennessee. It's folks that have students that are in UT Martin, this is headed your way right now. Tornado on the ground that is moving into Weekly County, as we can see right now on our radar scope here. Let's go ahead and put the, um, the uh, not the velocity, but the uh, reflectivity back up. Again, this is the possible tornado. You know, we were tracking that bright purple area with that other storm. This is just intense rain and hail. That's the debris, and that debris is moving right into the Martin, Tennessee area as we speak. And uh, it's moving, are they tracking this at 50? 
Uh, right now, yeah, they're they're tracking this actually moving east at 60 miles an 60. hour. Well, it's moving more. I can tell you that circulation is moving more to the northeast. It is, the east it is because it's it's gone in this general direction. So Martin, Tennessee, this is headed your way. A possible tornado. We just got an update. Hit the CC for me again, if you would. And uh, we'll see if we've got. Yeah, it's a little stronger signal now. Of the and again, this is going to be right about here now. The tornado is just to the south and east of Martin, Tennessee. So uh, we're going to be staying with this for just a second. And as it's headed towards a uh, fairly highly populated area, a possible tornado moving in. If you would put the uh, velocity on for me real quick. Yeah, this is definitely a tornado. Real tight circulation right here in extreme western Weekly County that's headed towards Martin, Tennessee as we speak. The other rotation we're watching is right up here. That's a little weaker. I think they're probably going to let that warning expire. Yeah, I haven't but, seen any updates on that warning other than um, they haven't they haven't issued it. Union City really, I mean, I can zoom up so you can see. Uh, right. Areas of Union City had that rotation, and that's been moving off to the northeast, and that's looking to hit areas near South Fulton. So um, you're going to be just on the edge of that warning. We, I don't think it's going to continue at the moment, but again, something that we'll still watch if you're in South Fulton, just giving you the heads up that you still might want to take shelter to be on the safe side currently, even though it's not looking to be right. as uh, prominent as that rotation. There, there, there yeah. is a little bit of rotation. There's some strong winds coming towards the radar, not so strong going away, but we'll watch that because that's going to go right into Fulton, Kentucky. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on that as well. But yeah, that is definitely a, a very strong signature of a, of a tornado. That is some very, very tight, which is which is interesting because put the reflectivity back up, if you will, please, Lisa. Uh, and, and you will notice that um, it doesn't look anything like the other storms we were looking at. Uh, but this has a very, very strong signature. And I think that's the debris signature because I think the CC is lagging a little bit. Remember, I, it was right here, the last radar frame. There it is. I think the tornado is right here. So go back to the reflectivity, if you would. And we're just going to track this right here as the debris ball as it's moving into Martin, Tennessee, as we speak. So we have a tornado on the ground in Martin, Tennessee. I know we have a lot of folks in that area that watch us. I also know there's a university there that you may have some of your kids that go to school there, give them a text right now. Tell them to get in their safe spot. Put as many walls between them and the outside as possible as we have a tornado on the ground, according to radar, moving in to the Martin, Tennessee area. All right, Lisa, if you would, let's expand back. We're going we're gonna to come back to this in just a second, and let's go to St. Louis. I want to get an update on the patent tornado, the possible patent tornado um, that is going on here. And uh, yeah, zoom down into here. So there's our possible tornado right here that is moving into Patton right now. We've got another possible tornado right here that is moving uh, to the south of Zion and to the south of Marquand. Hit the velocity for me, if you would, please, Lisa. Very tight circulation. Uh, I doubt we're going to get anything from the CC, but let's try it. It's a long way away from the radar. No, there, it's showing noise. That's probably some rain and hail mixed. So let's go back to the velocity. So we have a possible tornado what what right along Highway 72. Yes, Lisa. What they're saying with this is that the core is getting a little bit stronger, so definitely capable of some damaging winds and possibly hail up to one inch. Yeah, and when they say the core is getting stronger, it means that the, it's getting taller. The storm is gr growing, and that also tightens rotation. So if the storm is rotating, so you have a rotation. As the storm increases in velocity upwards, it tightens the rotation, and that's sometimes how you get it down to the ground. So near Patton, right along Highway 51 and 72, we've got a possible tornado moving in right now. This is going to go on the northern side of Segrickville, and then it's going to move into the northwestern parts of Cape Girardeau County. This will Based on the movement it's going, I don't think it's going to be getting into this area of Perry County. We'll watch it. It would be getting more towards the, what's the Altenburg area, that area of Perry County, if it holds together. So what I want you to do now, Lisa, for me, please, doing a great job, by the way. Put it on the uh, uh, reflectivity, zoom out. I want to check on the Livingston County tornado. So we're going to go to Evansville. So zoom back out, go hit yep. the Evansville radar site. And we're and okay. Now we're going to zoom back into here, and I want to see how that's how that's doing. Um, and we'll put the uh, put the velocity on there for me. 
And yeah, we still have that possible tornado just to the north side of Marion. You can see it right here. Hit the CC for me just to see, not really see anything. We're getting a hail indication with this, but we're not getting a debris signature. But again, this is a long way from the radar, so this could be on the ground. All right, let's go back to the velocity. Thank you very much. And the velocity couplet is outside of the warning. Of course, this, this system we have here, the warnings don't update as fast as ours. I don't know if they've issued a new warning for Crittenden County or not, but I think there should be a warning for the rest of Crittenden County as this continues to move off to the north. It's going to stay north of Marion. Do me a favor. Put so they're saying, I just want to give you a quick okay. update. Um, the tornado warning in Henry, well, for us, it's Weekly County, that a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado was located All right, going into, over Sharon. So okay, so let's go back. Let's go back to that. Again, for Crittenden County, northern Crittenden County, I want you in your safe spot because we've got a possible tornado. And we've got a confirmed tornado right here. We're going to have to put the Memphis site on for this. And there it is right there. Again, it's moving into the Martin, Tennessee area right now. Wow, yeah, that, that circulation has really ramped up. You said near Sharon. That is it right yep, here. Right there. There's our tornado moving on the southeast side of Martin, Tennessee. Hit the CC for me. Uh, it's kind of noisy. So again, it's getting a long way away from the Memphis radar site. Um, it would be great if we had Paducah because we'd be able to see it a little better. But uh, it is uh, definitely showing strong signs of rotation. Hit the uh, reflectivity for me, if you will. I want to see if there's... So this is probably the debris that's being lofted in the air, the little darker colors. But uh, again, it's going into the southeastern side of Martin, Tennessee. All right, let's and that's that looks to be making its way just to the in between Martin, but there's another track that that could be making its way towards Dresden. So okay, if you're yep. near Dresden, definitely something you want to keep in mind to get into your safe spot as this is going to be heading your way. And again, the good thing, these are moving very, very fast. And I want to get there, you... there's a report of possible damage from this. So I... keep in mind, really. Take it seriously. Yeah, I, I, yeah. We, well, we saw it on the ground with the debris signature. And I want to give you a heads up, your first alert in Murray, Kentucky, because back out just a bit for me, would you? I think this is going to be headed towards Callaway County. So here's this storm. It's moving this way. So yeah, this one's going to be moving towards the Murray, Kentucky area. Probably stay just to the south, but it's going to be close. So we're going to have to continue to watch this. But right now we've got a tornado moving into Martin, Tennessee as we speak. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to be concerned with the southeastern parts of Martin as this tornado continues to move off to the north and to the east. So for you folks in northeastern Weekly County, you're under the gun. Southeastern Graves County and southern Callaway County, if it holds together, you're going to be under the gun as well. I want to give you a first alert that a possible tornado, it is a tornado right now, but we don't know. This is not the same type of storm that produce a tornado for 50 to 60 miles, but it still could stay on the ground for quite some time. All right, let's expand out. I want to take a look at uh, our Patton storm, our Bollinger County storm. And this one uh, is still radar indicated. Um, no confirmation on this other than compared to the storms that we've been looking at, the, the, the velocity. So our, our winds coming together, not looking to be as impressive as some of these other storms, but still a tornado warning on that for northern portions of Bollinger County, heading into uh, southern portions of Perry County and just clipping northwestern portions of Cape Girardeau County. Right. That's where this is issued for. Uh, go ahead and put the velocity on for me, would you please? And so, yeah, this is this is looking much weaker. It was looking much stronger. It was moving into Patton. So we still have a possible tornado in northern Bollinger County, moving into extreme northwestern Cape Girardeau County and southern Perry County. But this is looking a little better. Do me a favor and pan down so I can see just to the south. I want to see what's going on with this activity right here. Okay, so everything looks okay with this. Some strong winds in southern, Ma in southern Madison County and northern Wayne County, but we're not seeing any tornadic activity. All right, let's go back to Martin, Tennessee, where we know we have an issue right now with a tornado moving into Martin, Tennessee. And right now it is 11.03. I guess we've been on the air for... Um, I don't know. I think we went on around five o'clock, just shortly after five o'clock. And uh, there it is. We've got a, yeah, that is a significant Sorry, uh, velocity. You out there. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. Um, did they? So there's, a, there's a lot coming in right now between the different warnings. So I'm trying to. Right. No, I understand. Um, so pretty much what they're talking about. Well, they're actually talking about, let's see. Hopkins, Kentucky, but that would be... 
Yeah, that is that's this, well off to our east. That's not. Yeah, I know. There's a, this is going to be out of Memphis. Yep. Yep. Um, um, so pretty much, they're just saying which right now that there's a confirmed tornado over Sharon near Martin moving northeast at 55. Okay. Um, no new reports on that other than what this did have earlier on was power lines down, trees down, and impassable roads. That's going to be near Kenton. So that's where we saw that tight rotation yeah, we, and we prior saw that to it moving Really in. good uh, right here is what she's talking about. That's with the debris ball as well that we saw the debris. So signature. still looking to be, you know, rather tight for our rotation right now. Um, I can switch it over to CC if you want to see. Yeah, let's let's take a look at and again, it's so far away. This could be debris right here that it's hitting. We're hitting some hail. That's why we're getting these markers, these streaks like this. That's usually a signature of hail. A little round dot of blue is usually the debris. So we could be seeing a tornado on the ground right here. Do me a favor, go back to the velocity. I'm going to leave my fingers right there. It's pretty close, but it's not lined up perfectly. But again, it's a long way away from the radar. But the velocity is showing a pretty good signature of a possible tornado. It looks even tighter now, that latest update right there. Uh, expand out if you would, please. Just leave it on the velocity and let's check out the Evansville radar. I want to see what's going on with the Crittenden County storm again. Um, go ahead and, and, and switch it to the Evansville radar site. There you go. And uh, let's load that up and let's take a look at the velocity here in just a second. It'll load up. There we go. So there's again, that's what I was looking at right there. What's the time stamp on that? That doesn't look much different. So yeah, it's much broader. Yeah, so, this tornado warning only goes for another eight minutes. Yeah. So, um, this, so this storm, the rotation is much broader. It's weaker. So we can focus more on Patton and actually right now Martin. So let's just focus on Martin right now um, with this uh, confirmed tornado moving in. You can see a new severe thunderstorm warning was issued for a good bit of Bollinger County and a good, big, good bit of Cape Girardeau County. Uh, I can but switch it over there just so you can see that those storms are entering portions of Bollinger County right now and they're entering uh, looks to be western portions of Wayne County, but those aren't looking to be as strong down south. So I'll zoom back into this confirmed tornado that we are watching. In it's on the southeast side of Martin, Tennessee right now. Let's put the velocity back on so we can see the the new location and and it's uh, it's about to move into Dredston, I guess, right across this area in uh, Weekly County, and I think that's Palm. And I think that's getting Palm some power flashes okay. right now as well. So yeah, we've so got take shelter if you're in that probably location. a broad tornado on the ground. This is a this is a big circulation, and it's tight and it's strong, but it's it's rather large. So this could be a uh, not necessarily a violent tornado, but a strong tornado that is moving off to the northeast. Palmersville, you're next, and if this continues off to the northeast, again, like we talked about, Murray, Kentucky. What I want you to do now is expand out. I want you to hit Paducah just to see if they're back. I doubt they are. Put, there you go, hit that right there. And yeah, nothing's loading up. Nope, so, they're so, still so, down. Uh, okay, but yeah, that's old. This, that's is, this, is, the, this is old. I can yeah. see it on radar scope as well that on yeah, my phone that, I they're, gotcha. okay. that they're down. Okay. All right. So, so let's go back to the Memphis site. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go to the Fort Campbell site right here. See where my finger is? Yep. Fort Campbell. Beautiful. Yeah, this is closer. So uh, we'll zoom in on. Uh, yeah, you can really see the tornado. That is a tight circulation. That is that is a uh, pretty significant signature of a, a strong tornado. I don't know if we'll get CC on there or not, but we, yeah, we a do. Right we there. do right there. So we've got a tornado moving into Dredston right now uh, on the ground. Uh, again, it's good to have all these different sources in case something goes down. And uh, we've got this tornado continuing to move off to the uh, northeast at about uh, 50, 50 to 55. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, with these, uh, at least it goes for another 30 minutes and they are moving to the east. They're saying at about 60 miles an hour, but we've kind of been tracking this more of a northeast yeah, it's motion definitely rather than east. Because it was right here and yeah. it was right here, so it's definitely moving. Expand out just a bit, not all the way. I want to leave this shot up because we've got the tornado on the ground right here. And I just kind of want to see where Murray, Kentucky is. So, um, so I can pull it down a little bit. Murray's right here. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to place your marker over Murray, Kentucky. And then again, we're just going to put the cursor over the debris signature right here. And then what is the nautical miles? And that says approximately 27. So 27, so it's about 30 miles. 
and it's moving about 55 to 6. So, so this tornado is about half an hour or less away from Murray, Kentucky. And just giving you a quick update, that tornado warning we are watching near Paxton, northern Bollinger County, that has been canceled since good. that rotation's been weakening. So that's at least one good thing. We're not focusing on that tornado warning anymore. We still have that warning in portions of Livingston and Crittenden County, but uh, really where it's looking to have more of a rotation right now is in uh, Crittenden County, just to the north of Marion. So um, I I can back to that or we can. Yeah, let's let's take a just, look at that. Just to take a look at what's just, going we'll, on. We'll go there. back real quick and then we'll get back to to Martin, Tennessee again. Martin, Tennessee, Dredson, you need to be in your safe spot. We've got a significant tornado moving in there right now again. Uh, and I don't see it as much on on here, but near Marion, there was um, now that's Definitely. a pretty tight there rotation. I, I, just, I, yeah, that just updated. So uh, I'm trying to see the county line. So here's the county line. So this is Crittenden County. Um, it's hard for me to see that so name. I'm wherever I put my my mouse right here. Right. That's where that so, county line is. So for northeastern Crittenden County, and we're just going to say this, this is going to be out of your area in five minutes. Get in your shelter. Stay there for five to ten minutes. And then uh, this tornado or possible tornado should be gone. Again, we don't have a warning out officially, but that's a tight circulation. Good job, Lisa, on picking that out. Uh, we want to warn everybody in our viewing area. So northeastern Crittenden County, you need to be in your safe spot right now. All right, let's go back to the Fort Campbell radar so we can track the storm that's moving in Weekly County and possibly headed towards, um, towards Murray, Kentucky. Again, yeah, right Okay, load up. There we go. Yeah. So here we are. That is the uh, the possible tornado. Well, not possible. We know it is a tornado. It's in that purple haze area right now. So it's going to be hard to see. Go ahead and put the uh, yeah the, the reflectivity on because the uh, this is going to be hard to see until it gets out of here. But the possible tornado or I shouldn't say that the tornado it's on the ground. It's moving through the Dredson area. We have power flashes. We had a uh, a tornado signature on radar. It's going to be headed towards Palmersville and then it's going to move out of our viewing area into Henry County and then it's going to move back into our viewing area as it moves towards uh, Callaway County uh, and possibly moving towards the Murray, Kentucky area. Again, if you're just joining us, we've been with this all night. It's 1112 right now. Uh, we've got probably four more hours of this to go tonight, unfortunately. Um, We've been speaking for quite some time, uh, but we are, and we've had some issues with uh, radar sites going down, but uh, we're getting through it. We're working through it, and it's a good thing we have these backup sources like we have. So, again, a tornado is moving towards the Palmersville area. Yes, Lisa, what you so got? So that uh, rotation that we were just watching in Crittenden County, they did not put a tornado warning on it, but they put a severe thunderstorm warning on it. So um, we, we just focused on that. Right. Still something to, to so, get in your safe spot. Again, like I said, north, northeastern Crittenden County, get in your basement. Get in your safe room, stay there for about 10 minutes, it'll be gone. Uh, it's not a tight, tight rotation, but it is pretty significant to where in this environment I want you to be safe. But we need to focus on where we know we're having some issues. Hit the, uh, the velocity for me. I want to see if they extended the range. Yep, they did. I figured they would. Look at that. So um, this is going to be going just to the south of Palmersville. Hit the CC for me. Let's see if it shows up on the CC since they've extended the range. Sure does. Tornado is on the ground right now. This tornado has been on the ground for about 15 miles at least. Uh, and, and it continues to move through Weekly County. And again, I want to give you your first alert. South and east of Murray, Kentucky, this tornado is headed towards southeastern Callaway County. Uh, so we will probably, once it crosses into Todd County, we will probably catch our breath. If this is if there's no other tornado warnings in our area and then be coming back on in about five minutes. Uh, it's been, we've been kind of going nonstop here, but we do have a tornado on the ground right here to the east of Dredston, and it is moving in to uh, the northeastern parts of Weekly County. All right, hit the, uh, the the reflectivity for me, if you would, please. And let's expand out just a bit. I want to make sure I want to look at the um, there are no warnings now in, in the southern parts of Western Kentucky. 
How are the warnings looking like going into Bollinger County? There's that so, storm coming um, out of Wayne County. That, and I can I can zoom out. You can see it a little bit. We still have that severe thunderstorm warning. Even though you're not seeing it a lot, there definitely is going to be more of a bowing shape stretching anywhere from Marble Hill uh, heading up north. I can switch over radars really quickly to show you. Yeah, this. go ahead and do the St. Louis for us. So uh, what we're going to be watching is you got to hit it. You got to hit it again. There you go. Thanks. Severe yeah. thunderstorm warning that's stretching again into uh, areas of Bollinger County, and this is going to move into Cape Girardeau County. So we're seeing more of that 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 echo shape. It, that bow it's echo. a little pronounced, yeah. so that's where we'll usually pick up some damaging winds. Hit, if you would hit the velocity for me real quick, I want to check this kink and I want to see. Yeah, OK, we're good. We're good. Uh, we'll have to watch this right now. Nothing to be overly concerned with. But for no. you folks in Bollinger County and Cape Girardeau County, we don't want you to think we're forgetting about you. We've got a severe thunderstorm that's moving in. This will affect Oak Ridge and the Jackson area and the northern parts of the city of Cape Girardeau. But so far, this part of the storm is behaving. So, and the uh, only the only thing that we are watching is you mentioned that storm up near Mount Vernon. The tornado warning of that looks to stay to the just north. Just to the north but of us. That severe thunderstorm warning. We'll have to watch that as it moves into our northern portions okay. of that county. So right now, and we'll now, have to. Yeah, this line is starting to act up. It's headed towards uh, Pinckneyville, Tamarola, Decoin, and then Ava. This line will be headed towards the I-57 corridor. So. We'll have to watch and see how strong this line gets. All right, let's go back to Fort Campbell and uh, so we can track that storm that is moving in Weekly County that has a tornado on the ground right now. And there's that tornado that we're seeing, a possible tornado that's moving out of Crittenden County. So we can, uh, you folks in Crittenden County that were listening to me, you got about three minutes and then uh, you're good to go. Um, here's that possible tornado moving into Palmer's for me, if you would. Yes, very, very tight, tight circulation and and very strong inflow as well out ahead of the storm. But there's the tornado right there to the south of Palmersville. Let's go ahead and uh, put the CC on. See, you know, we still have that tornado right there on the ground and um, see what's that time stamp? It's 11. So uh, so we should be up for a new uh, actually it's 14. So uh, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well on this. So this tornado is still in Weekly County as it moves off to the uh, northeast at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. Let's put the uh, velocity back on, if you would, please, because this is the good way to show it. We'll wait until we get, I think, the next update. It'll be about right here. And so in about 10 minutes, it'll be out of our area. And if we don't have, again, like I said, once this strong tornado that's showing up on radar is out of our viewing area, Lisa and I are going to catch our breath, get caught up on a couple of things, because this is going to be moving into Callaway County, and we're going to have to keep tracking it. And uh, hopefully we'll get the Paducah radar site back here shortly. I know they're working on it hard, but um, right now this is our possible tornado. I shouldn't say possible again. It is on the ground. We have uh, radar confirmation of this tornado. It went through the Sharon area, the southeastern part of Martin, Tennessee. It went through Dredston. Now it's going into the Palmersville area. And uh, eventually, if it holds together, it'll be going into Callaway County here shortly. So uh, again, Paducah, or I think it's still spring issuing the warnings, they may issue a tornado warning for Callaway County while this storm is still in Todd County. If that's the case, we will still be going back to regular programming to catch our breath for about five minutes to get everything caught up and then head back on and track this as it moves into southeastern uh, Callaway County. Would you do me a favor and put the velocity back on? Let's see if we got a new scan. No. Not yet, and no, no reports or anything coming in um, other than, again, this is something we're watching for a confirmed, potentially large and, con and extremely dangerous Do you, tornado. Okay, there's so. the update. It just updated, and there's a void in there, which makes me think that this could be a large tornado because you see how there's, there's a void yep, in the yep. data. So this could be a very large, wide tornado. Now, this is an extreme northeastern uh, Weekly County. It's about to move out of our area. We got about another five minutes with it, maybe not even that long uh, again. So for you folks in the booth that have been doing a great job with me, what I'm saying we're going to do is likely here in about five minutes, toss things to the regular programming, get our bearing straight. There's the CC drop. So there's a tornado still on the ground. And then we will probably have to go back on the air when this gets closer to Callaway County. This tornado will likely stay to the south of Murray, Kentucky, but it's going to be headed towards the new Concord area. Eventually it's going to it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to get there. That's why I'm saying that Lisa and I will have about five minutes to just take a deep breath 
and get caught up until uh, we have to go back on the air. So again, this is a probably a very large tornado because there's a void of, refle of velocity, which means that we've got strong, it's almost think of it like an eye of a hurricane almost. When you get these really large tornadoes, there's, there's almost like a calmness in the center, uh, but it's extremely violent all the way around it. So we've got a big tornado more than likely that is in northeastern Weekly County right now. There are no other tornadoes, correct? Tornado warnings, correct? This is our only tornado warning right now. This is our only one right now. The other ones are off to our east and off to our north. Um, what is to watch though with this area? It's still moving into a location that's uncapped and has about 1500 joules of cape. So we're talking about a lot of energy for this storm to continue to live and thrive off of as it's again going to look to move into southern portions of Callaway County. So based on what we're seeing here, um, based on what we've seen by even looking at CCs, we're still seeing just a very tiny uh, debris ball tornado very likely or it has actually been confirmed is on the ground. This is going to be heading towards Cottage Grove. So if you maybe know anyone across the county outside of us, but still in Cottage Grove, giving you that first alert. This also is then going to continue off on that northeasterly path towards New Concord. So Hazel, New Concord, this is coming for you. Definitely going to be a time where you want to get into your safe spot and make sure that you at least are not looking outside for this. I'm trying to see if there's any other updates of what's coming in. Um, pretty much we're still seeing a lot of circulation and so okay, that's an passing near Cottage Grove, just to the south of Cottage Grove. Yeah, so we've got a that. tornado right now. As you can see, it's right here moving into Cottage Grove. Again, once it crosses this line, once the entire circulation is crossed into Todd County, we're uh, not Todd County, but Henry County, we will toss things back to our regular programming for about 10 minutes until it gets close to Callaway County. Again, we've got a tornado right here. Hit the CC for me. I want to see if it's a lowering, any more of a lowering. There's our possible tornado right there. Again, it's kind of iffy whether it is a, uh, a debris signature. Earlier, it was definitely a debris signature, but we have very, very tight rotation that is moving out of uh, Weekly County right now and moving into Henry County. All right, let's put the reflectivity on briefly. You can kind of make out this uh, almost like a bow shape right here with these purples. And again, this would be probably where the debris would be if there is any. Go ahead and hit the velocity. I want to see if my fingers like right where the now it's more down here. Now hit the reflectivity for me again. OK, well, we're not really seeing a strong signature from reflectivity that there's any uh, debris on the ground. So let's go back to velocity. And again, this is now the speed that it's going. It has crossed over into Henry County, which is kind of officially out of our area. So uh, do me a favor real quick. Let's hit the, the reflectivity and expand way out. I just want to kind of see the whole area. Again, we've got this storm that's moved out of Crittenden County. We're going to continue to watch this storm, but these are, 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 not, are not, they're not doing as, as, as uh, bad as we were thinking they might, and hopefully that trend will continue. So with that said, the tornado has moved out of our viewing area. You're still going to see the tornado warning for Weekly County on the little bug there for a while, but the tornado has moved out of Weekly County. We're going to continue to watch this still right here that's going to be headed towards the area. We can see some tornado activity with that later, but for right now, we're going to throw it to the regular scheduled program and Lisa and I are going to kind of get caught up on some other activities, but we will be coming back shortly because this tornado is headed towards Callaway County.